so you gotta restart the stream. No, we're good. Oh, it works. Never mind. It works. Perfect. You know what the fuck? Scar is out. Josh is out. Where's mine? I don't have one. You don't have one? Oh, someone sent me one for me. I forgot to send it to you guys. Because oh, well. I deserve one. No, that's not it. I used to click random pictures. There we go. Oh. I'm in there. I'm image three, apparently. I'm glad I'm the white text, not Scara, based, you know. Really, really nice. Looks yeah. great. You want me to move over? Let me, over uh, let me just set the camera a little bit better. Alright, we're good. Oh! <laughs> ah, welcome everybody. Josh was is gone. He's playing Magic today. You just got Yuna and I. So, as much as you thought all that horrible music was coming from Josh, and I appreciate you guys... I was just assuming that was Josh. It was, it was you and I. It was, but it's better music than what Josh plays. Fuck Josh. Okay. I actually like a lot of stuff he plays. We have very similar tastes in music. That was a joke, dude. Anyways, welcome to the pre PLT pre-show. We were supposed to have Pokemane on here this time around. Pokemane. But she, ditched well, us. Skara, no, she didn't ditch us. Yuna, I got them tickets. Yuna and her to come today. And then Yuna never told her that I got the tickets. But it's not fair because, come on, dude. Don't you expect You guys live together, and I sent, I was like, all right, I got you guys tickets. And I thought at some point that would come up. And then, like, last night we were talking. I messaged you, and I was like, what time do you want to meet for shit? And, like, I, I assumed there was some communication there. And then, like, this morning I wake up, and I, get a, I have a DM, and it's like, oh, yeah, I'm not going. I plan on streaming today. I assumed you also told her, and then you were only communicating with me when to tell her the time. I, I knew, I had a, the strangest feeling that you're like not going to tell her, so I'm like, I think I should make a group chat with me, Mark, and Pokey. But I was like, nah, Mark's pretty smart, but you're not. Alright, so I agree it's like more on my side than yours, but still. I put in all that effort to get those tickets, and then she didn't go to the LCS, and now I'm not here for this, so Wee. you're stuck with us two instead. So just talk a little bit about the fact that you guys moved in. Last time on PLT... The house, the crew was not all there. Pokelols is now here. Spooks is now oh, here. Yeah, huh? So talk a little bit about the whole the house situation with Scara. Chris is still there. Pokey. Unfortunately. <laughs> all right, we all moved in. It's been a good time. I think everyone's getting along like pretty well, except we had like really shitty internet problems. So we actually have two internet like uh, lines, I guess that's what you call it. Are they by the same people? Is no. Like, okay, so you have two separate companies so with we have lines. Frontier and Spectrum. And Frontier has been absolutely dog shit. Like, it, it's gone out twice. We've called the support twice. And, yeah, it just, like, randomly cuts out. Sorry, I'm going to boost the mic volume. Make sure it's not enough. You can keep talking. Okay. I'm listening, I swear. And whenever I space out, I swear I'm still listening to you. So, yeah, we got that. We It fucked up a shit ton. And then, randomly, we're like, all right, guys, don't worry. We have two internet... Pro oh, wait, oh, the first thing that happened was, like, we couldn't actually use our second it second internet provider because we didn't have a long enough Ethernet cable to connect our computers. So we had to wait an extra day and order ca cables. Then the cables came, and then it broke. Like, the second line broke. And so we ended up just going another day without internet. And then, finally, we called them again, and we ordered... Or not ordered. Uh, Frontier, like, tech guys te came out. Yeah, yeah. And... He Honestly, it looked like the same exact thing I did. Like, I was on the phone, they're like, hit this button and you'll reset it. Then hit this button and then you'll reset it again. And hopefully it works. And I swear to God, he did the same exact thing. And then, I mean, it worked again, but it's probably going to die again. And fuck yeah. you, Frontier. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Like, whenever you move in LA, you don't know if you're moving to a place with just awful internet. Like, I had to move a couple times because of that, where it's just like, oh, it's just going to drop all the time randomly. This is uh, impossible to work at as a streamer. But. I mean, how, how's the rest of the, the house? Does everyone hate each other yet? No. Do you feel like it's going to get that way? No. But we're messy. We're messy. We're like, everyone leaves shit we're out. We're gamers. Dude. You have no skills. You're right. Just, You're right. We're just idiotic gamers. Well, so like, streamers in particular have, have like no, no life skills. What the fuck? What can, you, what can you do? Can you drive? No. That's what I'm saying. Like... Okay, That's like a basic you... skill set of like any real human being in in America. I you can't drive. Explain more, dude. Come on, like can you cook? Can you cook? Yes, I cook for myself and for the team. Back when I was living at Curse, they could they could pay me money and I'd make I'd make them food. And I used to cook lunch for myself every day. Well, I can't cook either. I used to cut my own hair. Could, could you do that? 
My hair no. looked awful back then. How many way. how many people can cut their own hair? I don't know, but I'm just saying, like, what are your skills, dude? You meme and you stream and you blow Scara. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm useless. All I know how to do is post stupid pictures on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. That's better than me. Hey, don't fucking... Do you know anything about production? You're just crinkling a... This is what I'm talking about. Streamers are so useless. You're just crinkling a piece of paper in front of the microphone. I hope they like it. <laughs> they probably did. It's some fucked up ASMR shit. Where it's like, I want the most annoying sounds ever. Let's do a pokey ASMR for the pre-show. You want to do? Let's do no. ASMR pre-show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the no. pre-show. It... Dude, that's just so... Me neither. I don't dislike it. I think it's just weird. And it's me not neither. for me. Exactly, me too. Why are you not? You gotta whisper more. Me too. Have you seen Pokey's intro to her ASMR? Where she goes, A-S-M-R. As soon as that shit happens, I'm like, I'm out, dude. This is As soon as freaky. that happens, you're hard. You're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know. I, I, uh, I'm not shaming you. I'm just saying it's not for me. So like kink shaming bitch. No, I like I was actually she was she was doing the ASMR stream last night right before I I stream my shitty viewer ARAMs as I was on the dashboard it just said she was alive so I was like I wonder what this is like I, like it was just I just felt uncomfortable I just felt like someone was like whispering in my ear. Yeah, exactly. And it's not like it's bad. It's just like I'm it's not, just not for me. Like like the only time people talk to me like that is like during sex in bed. Yeah. Freak. <laughs> no, I mean like after like you're just like hanging out after. Yeah, you're just like. It's like you're just not trying to like yell, you know. You're like watching a movie, like hey, what do you think of that? I don't know. Like that's the only time. It's like relatively intimate situations. Why does Josh whisper? I mean, you guys are the only guys here. I mean, we got miles, dude. We don't want like. Oh yeah, that's true. In like are the the walls here are thin, you know. Paper thin. You gotta whisper. <laughs> Someone write a fanfic with you and Josh. Dude, that's probably like you don't need to write that. That's it's not a fic. That shit's going down. No. Uh, so, moving on to other things that people might actually care about. Tank update. Oh, yeah. Did you read about that at all? I saw the video on Twitter, and it was like... I haven't even seen that. Break, oh, it, break it down right. for me. Basically, it showed, like, the three new ults, kind of, of, like... Sej. Mal it looks like Mal the most updated champs are going to be Maokai, Sejuani, and Zack. So, Maokai's was his oldest, like... It looks like... Uh, you know Zyra E? Yeah. So, like huge and it crossed like an entire lane. That's Maokai's ult. It's just Zyra E but like big. Super AoE. Yes. Okay. And then Sejuani ult was made for X Smithy where he can miss that shit and it still applies. So like she throws like a bigger ult it looks like and then it like it's like a Nivea R that lays right when it lands. Okay. And then Zax was I don't know I don't remember Zax was. I, I heard some shit like it, it sucks people in. And that's how it works. I mean, that sounds good, because I think there needs to be, like, more Orianna stuff. Like, more Orianna ultimates that pull people together for, like, big wombos. I feel like there's not enough wombo comboing in League. Because, like, even though that's, like, really, like, not super high-level gameplay, it's still fun as shit to watch, as it expected. Is. When you see, like, an Oriol with an MF ult on top, and then, yeah, like, you yeah. throw a Sejuani ult, you're just like, they're fucked. They're that's, fucked, That's yeah. GG, like, oh my god. So, like, I want, I want more stuff like that. We were talking about, uh, I don't know if you guys seen, like, Darkseer in Dota 2. His Q is, like, uh, the, what you call it? Black hole thing? It's not black hole. I uh, forgot what it's called. But it's, like, a quick, like, uh, yeah. absorbing thing. Sucky. Sucky. I don't know how to describe it. It's like sucky. Or sucking in. Suction? Suck me. <laughs> um, Freudian slip. Yeah, I don't know anything else about the tank update. I heard there's, I saw, like, like, the items, items look busted. Yeah. I, there's some weird thing that like uh, Thormail builds into now. And oh yeah, Thormail builds into Randuins. I and saw that and then like it does something crazy too. Oh, reduces crit chance by like forty percent. Oh, like twenty percent. So you can add tabbies onto it, and so like you just do nothing. Yeah, <laughs> like I, all the tanks sound so broken, and I, it's like uh, sounds really fun to play against, and like gonna be a good time for all AD carries once again. I mean, Bork's probably gonna get nerfed, and it's just like time to complain again. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I tend to not follow stuff until, like, it actually happens. Because, like, when you're talking about the game and, like, some random, like, thing pops into your head and you just fuck yourself. Because, like, you're talking about some patch that hasn't actually hit the uh, Tournament Realm client. So, like, because uh, live patch is, like, a patch ahead usually. And I just try not to read anything until it's relevant. Because otherwise, yeah, I'm like... Oh yeah, and then LeBlanc's changed to her, her uh, spell, like, her bouncing on her passive. And it's like, oh wait... That uh, hasn't happened yet or something. 
That makes sense then. Well, that well probably the mid. I don't play solo queue, so it doesn't matter. The mid season patch will probably be for MSI, right? Probably not. Oh really? I would. I don't know. I, I would so. hope they don't. I think it is. That would suck because it's Remember like... Remember that world patch? where The Juggernaut, the juggernaut patch? patch? Yeah. That was so good. You Thanks, thought that was Ryan. good? No, Thanks, you're... Thanks, Ryan. Okay, you're sarcastic. <laughs> no. I was like, all right, so here's all this shit that everyone did to get to worlds, and then it's like you're playing a t- totally different game. Yeah. And they, they did that like every season up until season five, and then they, they didn't really do it for season six, which, thank God, but like... No. They were always just like, oh, Triforce is broken now, season four. Everyone who builds Triforce is now just the best champions. Yeah, no, that shit was awful, and it's like Mordecai just actually like. They, they even did it for like pre like uh, spring split shit too. Like, oh, here's Feral Flare, and uh, by the way, Heal just got reworked to be the most broken summoner in the game. Season four, I was like, yeah, no, that's fucking awful. And stupid. Do you guys remember old Heal? It healed you and your teammate, full, sped right? them up. It was for it was for more than it is now, and then it removed healing debuffs. So the counter, oh, yeah. to, the counter to healing, got countered by heal. Yeah, that was pretty cool. So you could just no, it was so dumb. You no, just the Mundo would take heal and like yeah. TP and then we, heal off we the ran entire... we ran four heal comps, four heal comps. Yeah, we would have Lulu with heal mid lane. Yeah, no, that shit was broken. It was so <laughs> dumb, and then we just got a feral flare jungler and like you can't kill him, and we just Lulu ult him, and we just pop heals on him, and it was like, that's GG. I, I have the feeling M- Wait, someone said MSI seven point eight. Is this seven point eight? No, seven point eight is the one that is coming out next. So that's the... But it's not the that, mid-season update, I don't Oh, think. okay. Cool. I might be wrong. Someone can correct me in chat if they know, but... Oh, yeah. Okay, let's... Yeah, but let's not do that. That would yeah, be that was, sad times. That was pretty uh, MSI awful. seems like... I mean, last MSI was pretty cool. I feel like this MSI probably I, would be cool, too. I like the idea of it. The problem is I don't know if like the hype's going to die out with like the play-ins. Because oh. it starts with, you know... Yeah. All the wild card teams playing, that's fine. And then, like, if NA doesn't get into actual, like, the oh, actual MSI yeah. event, it's kind of like... It, one, one, it would be, like, pretty sad to watch. But two, it would be, like, also pretty sad for all NA fans to be like, wait, we got we lost to the wild cards. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, like, it, it, it's like doubly bad because, like, okay, we're not at the event. And we it, lost the worst Yeah, team. and the, the way that we did not get to the event would be uh, pretty tragic. So like, Yeah, that's, that's true. I think they'll get into that. But yeah. I think they will, too. Like, assuming TSM or C9 reps... Last time I saw it was sweet. <sighs> Last time I you know saw it was like... Because that was there, baby. I, yeah, I saw that picture. Like, who's that greasy kid in okay. the front? <laughs> in those pictures. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? you just on no, stage. No, that was so weird. That, I was so funny. I was like, who the fuck? This is before I knew who you were. I was like, who Oh, really? The, yeah, I don't... Because you weren't like Scar's... You don't know who I am? You weren't, Scar's, you weren't Scar's boy toy yet, right? Yes, I was. Were you already his boy that toy? That sounds so lame. No. <laughs> yes, I was... <laughs> <laughs> Instead of, there's no way to answer that. No, you weren't his boy toy yet, or yes, you were. I, I was a friend of Scar's at the time. Yes. Were, you, were you living with him? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I, didn't, I didn't remember, like, I don't know. Well, that's, I don't know, dude. That was a great time. It was actually really grim at first, because when we lost to the wildcard team, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But then... That was like watching, being with COG and watching them scrim, and they won like every goddamn scrim at MSI. It was. They just like actually were like mad. They, they were hot. So that's, that's actually I don't know what things. happened, dude. It was just like, dude, every scrim was just one. It's I'm like not even kidding. People don't like acknowledge streaking in LCS, like streaking hot or cold. We're like, oh man, this team looks like they're suddenly much better than they are, and it's like, no, nah, they're just hot right now. Like that's a thing. Like no offense that's to true. CLG, but like. If they were just playing their normal level, I don't think they go that far in that tournament. But they were hot and they yeah, played well. True. Like it's not to take away from their performance. They but still played well, but like yeah, yeah. Like, yeah so that's true. No one really talks about yeah. Like C nine, what happened? Oh, they were just in a slump. They didn't like get worse. Like yeah, Jensen, like Jensen just street. played like an idiot for a little bit. Yeah, like they were in a slump. It's no, not, it's not like the end of the world. They're suddenly worse. Everyone caught up. Like all these like other storylines. It's just like, nah. They just didn't play. Have you. Yeah, that's true. Well, I question one of the best teams in the league. Like, now they're just hot right now. Like Moon and High are killing everybody. That's true. And then like that stops happening. Yeah, that that kind of does feel like that. I never thought of it that way. But no one really calls that out ever. Right. It's it's just oh they're they're on an upswing. They're doing better now. But oh, it's yeah. not like you can run hot. That happens in sports all the time. You just run hot for a little bit. That's true. Um. Oh yeah. What about the rookie of the split, coach of the split? What do you think? Ooh. So. I actually was talking to Scar about this. I actually really like what Scar did, where he did not vote for anyone for Coach of the Split, he said. And I was like, I wish I did that. And everyone I've talked to has been like, I wish I did that. Anytime I mention it, they're like, oh, yeah, that's smart. I wish I did that. No one wants to vote on Coach of the Split because it's the most, like, 
fake narratively driven thing there is. Like, yeah. Immortals, 17 and 1. Coach of the split. Dylan Falco. And, like, I'm not even dissing him. I'm just saying yeah, that, like, <laughs> it, it's just, like, that's what happens. Like, whatever has the best storyline, that, that's who gets coach of the split. That's so true. And then there's so many other factors. Like, well, this guy hasn't got coach of the split yet, so we need to give him some more votes. Or, oh, well, he kind of yeah, got I, it before. I feel like, yeah, I don't know how or to like, explain oh, that. Or, like, oh, you know, Parth plays with Bjerg, so he can't be that good. Even though, like, TSM improved the most without, like, any roster changes. No, like, big storylines. Like, oh, Immortals, like, they imported a bunch of players. Like, everyone else has, like, this kind of storyline for why they might have improved. Dig fired their old coaches who apparently sucked ass and then they got cop and like they did better. Yeah, Fly had like a bunch of random roster changes and brought in Medios and they looked better and like yeah. TSM just actually got better. And it's like no, he has beard. Yeah, I and he's know. got Reggie. You know, he's got the Reggie effect. What do you even do about that? No one knows shit about the scenes. And it's yeah, like, yeah. And it's like when Peter won coach of the split. Someone asked me recently, like, well, Who's Peter, oh, look, 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 look yeah, at Peter. Yeah. When he got coach of the split in season five, they're like, you know, isn't that funny to you? And I'm like, I just kind of took it as like it, more like org of the split kind of thing than it like coach. I think maybe they should rename it to like coaching staff of the split or like in, like that'd be kind of cool because like Peter and I were like worked together we were like pretty fifty fifty on it so like yeah our team went from like doing awful with Piglet in spring to struggling a little bit in summer and ending number one at the end of the split which like if you want to reward us for that cool. that sounds fair yeah. but like when you're like Peter Zang coach of the split it makes it sound ridiculous it right? does make it sound like the genius yeah like this guy this is team the shit yeah. and then he like somehow made them not shit yeah and it's like yeah I don't know what about rookie of the split rookie of the split I think was an interesting one it was did you, close did you see what Zyrene tweeted what did he tweet he said uh, if you looked at it like almost none of the broadcast team voted for contracts number one and none of the players voted for Cody Sun number one so it was like a divide between the two, like. So the players thought Cody said was better than contracts. No, 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 opposite. Oh. Okay. None of the none of the broadcast team voted for contracts number one. Wait, the broadcast team voted for Cody Sun number one. Some people did. I voted for him over him. Oh really? Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Oh. And then some people, none of the pro players had done that. Hmm. So there was like a divide. I guess watching like maybe like behind the scenes kind of stuff. So that's that's what we were talking about. I was like, so why was there that divide? Because on the one hand, I can see where. Like, if you look at it externally, Contracts was not super impressive. He had some good... Could yeah, Riv, Riv, Riv was an exception. Then there were, there were a couple other exceptions around. Except Riv. Yeah, Riv's got that shit on lock. Um, but uh, the point was just, like, if you scrim against Contracts all the time and he's popping off in scrims, you have a higher opinion of him than anyone who does not watch scrims, right? That's true. And, I mean, Contracts had a beast series this time, and he had some good Kazakh teams. His Kazakh was always nasty. His Graves was, like, hit or miss. His Rengar was a little hit or miss, and his Lee Sin was clean. So, like... That's true. Yeah, I don't know. It was pretty close. I, for me, I just look back at like Immortals, like early split. So one of the reasons I put Cody over him for the struggles is because all of Cody's struggles were like not necessarily his fault. Where like he's joining a team with a lot of imports who didn't even have Ole in time to scrim with, so he just he has like no time with his bot lane support. Second week, he's like jet lagged as shit. Ole is like all messed up and then there was some stuff I heard about how uh, Ole was really struggling to like come to, like live in America and like trust oh, yeah. his teammates there's like a lot of behind the scenes stuff I heard like that too. impacting his performance and then once he stepped up Ole was like a top three support and then their bot lane actually was like a top five yeah. bot lane they looked a lot better huh. I don't know so like for me I was like okay so let's excuse let's like excuse the first half of the split a little bit the whole first half, no problem. Not the, not the entire first half. Like <laughs> no, the first, no. the first three weeks when he looked off, when he looked awful, when when Pobelter was inting and like Dardock was crazy, and then the bot lane just sucked during that time. They were just like picking Morgana at all these random moments. I also just realized Scar might need to let us know how to get back in. You have your phone in case he messages you. Oh, let me go get it. Yeah, you might want to do that. Anyways, for me, there were a lot of like excusable reasons for uh, why I thought Ode. Right here. Oh, he is. You want to go get him? I'll go get him. You want it? Who wants it? You want a solo? Yeah. I'm you a want solo. a solo this? Yeah, I'm a solo. I'm talk shit about you. When go you for it, dude. Yeah, he's here. He said, Scar, I'll see you guys. He's been here for 10 minutes, minute. actually. What's that? He's been here for 10 minutes. Whoops! No, he's been here for like one minute. Whoops! You want to take a week? I was enjoying, I was enjoying our time together. I'm going to talk so much shit when you guys are gone. I'm going to talk about how I should be on the main show. Well, you didn't talk about that other thing about next week. Oh, you should ask them right now. Okay, I'll, I'll ask them. All right, so next week, Mark will be in Vancouver for 
LCS. He's going to do interviews afterwards. So the big problem is, is like, he's doing post-game interviews. So like, you remember Skara post-game interviews where you're just like, Hi, Skara. Hello, random uh, LCS pro questions, right? That's what Mark's going to do. So we have to figure out um, whether we should... Uh, uh, basically, he can't be on the show unless we give him more time. So would it be okay if we ran the pre-show longer so Mark could join in on the analysis? Or should we be like, fuck you, fuck Mark, and it should be Skara and one other person, not me, we have a person that I won't announce because that's supposed to be a surprise for the show. What do you think? Longer pre-show. That's my boys, dude. Is that too loud? That's my boys. Longer pre-show. That's my boys. Fuck this regular show. Shit! No one wants to watch the analysis. Okay, I'll tell uh, Mark and Skara that we should run the pre-show longer. Yeah, dude. It's just like... In all honesty, Mark just wants to get money from other people. And he doesn't care about this fucking show. Oh yeah, also we have to change the name of the show. What should we name change the show to? We got... So far we have Lobster... <laughs> We have no names for this show. Post leak time? Did anyone tell you the reason we called it post leak time? We were literally sitting around and be like, shit, what should we name it? And they're like, P remember that PLT? Wait, what was it before? It Was it PLT? It was PLT. You were just like, what should we name it? And then we just said, someone said post leak time. And they're like, that's genius. Let's just take their idea. And then <laughs> we, we, that was just a joke. And then we never thought of anything. And we just kind of got fucked because we were like, shit, we're going to start in like one week. Primetime League, that's what it was called. Fuck. Very autistic. Uniquely artistic. Fucking awful with names, dude. I'm actually fucking off. My name is Based Unit. <laughs> I'm just so fucking bad with names. So is Mark. Mark's name is literally his fucking name. Mark Z. What a dumbass name. Oh shit, they're here. But yeah, like I was saying, Scar and Mark are just great we hosts. We do? Wait, I told you. Wait, yeah. I mean, but I said, like, we should still. Oh, I didn't know that they were confirmed. You never told me they were 100%. Oh, I, I, I assume Scar told you. What? I assume you communicated as, like, no, host said, and, like, I said, people. I, I said I talked to him on the weekend. It is the weekend. Yeah, yeah, this is the first time we're meeting face to face. I love the weekend. Oh, my God. I love Starboy, too, dude. I'm a, okay, goodbye. Get off my couch. All right. Josh, or, Josh is Mark. Josh is not here today. Oh, we have no production. Slip. No, we got we got a uh, Yuna. I'm uh, sure he'll do a great job with this. Oh, I'm not doing this shit. We have bad production slaves today. Slave, sorry. I don't want to miss mess this stuff up. Is this? Yeah, this is Josh's. That's mine. Wait, those are my notes. Mark's notes. I'm just putting you on the side. Wait, no, you're on the wrong side. I'm, wait, on, the, I'm on the left side. I'm right. always on the uh, wait. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm wait, you're here. Wait, am I on the right side? It doesn't matter. We have the rotating logo nowadays, so it doesn't matter. Wait, am I on the left or right side? Aren't I on the left usually? No, you're on the left. You. Yeah, me. You're on the left. Yeah, what are you doing? Oh, wait, am I? No, I'm always on the left. Are you sure? Uh, wait. Wait, I'm usually... I feel like... I'm so confused. Okay. Anyways, anyways. Welcome to Post League Time. Yuna's gonna be on... The production this time, so make sure he'll be reading yeah. chat. Let him know if he's fucking up. Let him know if you want more memes. No, 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 wait, wait. <laughs> well, welcome to post league time. This is our post LCS analysis show. This is the fastest day we're ever gonna do for LCS, I think, because it ended at 3 p.m. after starting at noon in a classic 3-0. Uh, I'm Skara. I was on the analyst desk. I've been player, been a coach, been a streamer, been up about everything under the sun. Uh, and I'm here to present to you my ideas. Alongside with me, my co-host is Mark. Hello, I'm Mark Z. I'm a former coach, and now I do on-camera stuff. I have a YouTube blame game series that a lot of people know me for. I'm a big Reddit fan, and Reddit's a big fan of me. Oh my god. So we're, we're, definitely, oh my we're god. definitely on the wrong sides. Everyone's freaking out, and now that I think about it, my phone's always on my right, because I always have it on the outside of us, because like I'm not gonna put it yeah, in between I, us. Yeah, I know, I, I know. Yeah, I've yeah, always yeah. been on the left side. Are you, do you want to? Are you comfortable enough to break down at the? Yeah, I'm. I'm 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm comfortable enough to break it down on this. Yeah, side. because this series was there's not too much. We don't, yeah. We're not gonna get yeah. confused. Yeah. Uh, 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 joining us usually we have a production monkey called Josh. Zell. Yeah. Zell tweets Josh. Today the monkey broke out of this cage. He went to go off to do his own stuff. We'll He's catch him by next week. He'll be here. Until then, we have a temporary slave, uh, you know, who's on the pre-show. Uh, you can't see him, but don't worry. He's he doesn't need to be too. introduced. Yeah, he's yeah. chained up too. Um, today we're going to be talking about... P1 versus C9. Yes. And so uh, these guys had a little bit of history over the course of the season. The first time they met was the first week that, you know, Medios was subbing in. Shocked the world. They beat C9. We're like, oh my god, what's happening with C9? P1 looked really good. Towards the end of the season, they started making a lot of weird swaps with their support and their jungler again, bringing Anori back. P1 looked a little shaky. Looked really good in their quarterfinal matchup. And then... This series happened. Yeah, this series was a. I think this series was a 3 0. So, this is a series where P1 just wasn't able to take a single game from C9. Something that we might have suspected, we both voted for C9 uh, the other day. We were just by what degree that we, how confident we were that C9 was going to beat this team. <laughs> and the only reason I really said 3 1 was not to copy you. Yes. And then. I think I went 3 0. You went 3 0. You got it right. Yeah. And then I went 3 1, and I was like, there's a world where, like, these things happen, but I was like more convincing myself than like this is what, what I think will happen. Right, and so this is a series where essentially the first two games broke down into, well I guess the first game broke down into nothing really happened for 19 minutes and then Contract was able to get the stuff going. Throughout the entire series, Contract is the one who starts plays for C9 and typically he's outperforming the other jungle counterpart. Uh, first game it's like not by that much, he gets stuff going. Um, mid lane and then what happens was P1 reverses for bot lane and then uh, eventually, Contract is able to make enough plays to where they take over the game. Second game, Contract's show. He has 100% kill participation. He just slams the game. Um, and third game, uh, they bring in P1 brings in their secret weapon, Medios and Stunt. Unfortunately, the secret weapon failed at like. It's a secret weapon against P1. <laughs> yeah, the secret weapon malfunctioned around like nine minutes, and then they got like three for one at a fight, and then five for one, then another fight, and the game was over. And yeah, they, 15 minutes. they, uh, they got smashed. And like you said, the big story was, of course, Contracts. Rookie of the split, stepping up, showing that he deserved that award. And uh, pretty good performance overall out of him. So why don't we dive into game one in depth. Uh, pick ban, anything that stood out to you? I know there's a couple things for me. I'm just really surprised C9 banned Kennen, the first game. Because if I know anything about uh, C9, uh, I think Ray's... A great cannon player. Well, game one was well. It was impact. with impact, though. Right. And so I, I, I guess I know why they were afraid of cannon, but I don't necessarily think Zig plays much cannon. I, I, in general, there was no cannon priority this entire series. So I felt like them banning cannon after going for what would be a tank just seems really weird. Um, even so, the first game, I just thought they'd do more with Shen. That's it. I thought that they would do more with Shen. Uh, Despite like how proactive their comp could be, it was like well, they ha they couldn't do anything really until they got that one through one going, and I I don't know how you felt, but Ryu went for the abyssal rush. <laughs> oh, so I don't know if you want to get into this right now because <laughs> we we talked about the abyssal rush before. Okay, and against the Kazix in the jungle. Yeah, you only go abyssal if you're against multiple AP threats. Like jungle mid has to be AP, or you have multiple AP threats. So that in team fights, the abyssal aura is better for you. Going rushing abyssal, not very good. What you do is you sit on the negatron and you rush your core itemization. It's especially important for LeBlanc to hit the, the gunblade timing early because it allows her to do more damage, better sustain in lane, and better pick potential. Like it's the way she can team fight better. So essentially, like getting gunblade early is super important, and that's not what happened this game. Right. So the, a lot of the pressure as the game started was like all around mid lane. I thought I was actually relatively impressed with how P1 was playing it. They like Inori. And contracts have like the exact same jungle path to like lead to mid pressure, and I thought uh, people have, like misplayed that skirmish a little bit to lose more sums than they really needed to, like Anori flashing in trying to get the Q damage. But for the most part, I thought like the way they're playing it was smart because I'm thinking contracts only really plays around mid. If you neutralize contracts and then like go into the mid game with like a split pushing LeBlanc, I think this could work out really well. Uh, I think one of the things that was in C9's favor was that their pink war control around mid lane was right. super good. They, they denied tons of vision around mid lane. They had pinks on both sides. They actually had two pinks on the right yeah. side of the river. And so it was just like, eventually they were able to find an angle where the Kazakhs can go in and find a good shot at killing LeBlanc. Yeah, and so that's what it was. It was like P1 was matching that kind of jungle mid pressure for the early part. And then like eventually it's like C9's like, no, this is what we do. We're going to do it better than you. And, and they just got complete control of the vision, which, which set up the eventual first blood. The thing that was a little bit... Uh, 
um, worried, not maybe upset, but worried about is that Impact this game did not have a good game. Like, if you Do saw you think it, he didn't? Well, I thought, I think in team fights he always does great. But I right. think laning wise, the more I see of Impact, the more I'm like a little bit iffy because I feel like his relative laning has gotten worse and worse throughout the split. So, like, I think he'll just randomly lose CS, 10 CS, 15 CS in lane. Not anything that's super bad, you know? You can lose the CS and it's not the end of the world. But it's something I'm noticing a lot with Impact is that he's almost always down CS in lane. And it's something that I'm not used to. A, a player who, like, last playoffs was just like, oh, he's stomping every every game with Nar, right? Like, li literally 1v5 in yeah, yeah. Ga games with Nar. He, he pulled them to worlds. Exactly. And so, I think that's really a little bit worrisome going into the, the final match, that he's not doing as hot as he was before. Um, but I guess that's why they have Ray as a backup. Yeah, and I think one thing is that, like, maybe Haunter can exploit him, but, like, for the most part, he still performs extremely well in team fights. like you said. He had a nasty, like, uh, ultimate to knock in Ryu into a team so they could blow him up early on. Then he had a really sick like flash body slam, and uh, I, he, I, he interrupted Shen's ultimates all the time with with his ultimate as well. So like he did like a decent job. I certainly that. think in team fights and his decision making mid late game and his ability to shot call is way is super good, way better than Ray. Yeah, and, and we'll get to that in game two. Like Ray, yeah. some of Ray's decision making, I'm just like oh. All right, you can do that. Yeah, I don't know about this, man. Um, this game for me just came down to the fact that like P1 needs to make proactive plays to be able to win the game. Yeah. They, they C9 and P1 both want the same thing. They want to get the late game and team fight. C9, the entire split have this have this uh, situation where their early game sucks relative to their position. Yeah. Their early game is like fifth or worse in the. They, league. they were one of the worst like early game teams for grabbing turret. Their like gold differentials weren't horrible, but it was like. They're even with no turrets taken for them, and then eventually they get into mid game. Yeah, and the reason why the gold efficient isn't bad is because they have some of the best laners yeah. in, in the league. And so you'll constantly see, even this series, I felt like Jets not performed uh, his counterpart in lane every single game. Yeah, and I think uh, the big thing was like P1, they set up that 1 3 1, and they were like starting to. Every, every game kind of went like a little C9 favored early on, then like P1 claws it back a little bit, and then C9 make like one big game-changing play to end the game. And like, in game one, yeah, they, they had better mid control, that's good, but once Ryu hits his two items, starts going into the one three one they start splitting C9 up and like taking a couple, a couple turrets, and then Shady gets picked. And that's like the catalyst for the game ending. Yeah, Shady gets picked, it's like a 4 for zero after the next fight, and then they get I didn't, I didn't think that they needed to, to lose that fight that hard at Baron. Like, you lose your support, you're in a 4v5, sure. Yeah, but it was just played really poorly. I thought it was played like, super bad. Like, Zig went in way too early. Yep. Uh, and then, like, to, to, for Impact's credit, he had, like, the the fight-winning Gragasol that hit two people and hit LeBlanc into the fight. Yeah. Uh, and then he got immediately polymorphed and died instantly. Yeah. So, I thought Impact played that fight really good. But, yeah, they just played it... Pretty bad. And that's the thing, though. This team wants to get the team fights, trust their carries. However, C9 just team fights better. I, I think C9 has one of the best team fighting in the league. Right. And I think that, that Baron example, it was a situation where, like, Sneaky had stopped doing da damage to the Baron, and their comp doesn't do, like, a ton of damage to the Baron. It's like a Shen, or I mean, a, um, a Gragas, and then a Kha'Zix does decent, and then a Kassadin if your Ash isn't hitting it. So, like, after Sneaky kind of peeled off to try and get away from the pressure on the bot side, Zig did not need to taunt in, just, like, walk away and like, keep spacing it. It like, just, it just, he just went in way too early. This is a yeah. standard comp to where like you do a one through one and you uh, you uh, uh, eliminate a lot of the Kastin's ability to make to impact the game. Because yeah. Kastin can't one through one a LeBlanc in the side lane if she has Shen ulti pressure. However, if you're looking at the amount of stuff they did, the Shen did together with the rest of his team, you're coming at nothing. Essentially. Yeah, he he tried to alt into a couple plays, almost never got involved. It was basically just like a shield. He was he was his ultimate was just like a three hundred shield for most of their. Yeah, games. and you want to have when you're playing Shen, you need to make proactive plays with Shen. Yeah. like just making reactive plays can win you games, but like the best teams will use Shen, and it'll be like, oh, we're gonna coordinate a four man dive bot lane with the jungler. Jungler runs in. All right, you got Shen ulti. All right, you guys are dead. But. Yeah. That never really happened this game. They had like one play in 19 minutes that P1 did to like get a two for row in the bot lane, but that was it. And, and that was like the one Shen play that they really made. Yeah, and I think that they need to make a lot more than that. Yeah, so this game, Shady gets picked. C9 force around Baron after they pick the support. That bad fight happens. C9 pretty much cleans them up, gets a four for row and grabs Baron. And then you can't really hold against the team comp or with the team comp that P1 has. You have LeBlanc, Shen, Ezreal. Graves and it's just like they have no way to, to really like wave clear. So once the enemy team has Baron and they just split you up, you're just gonna lose your base. They try to go for a fight, they get crushed because they're behind now. 
C9 wins the game. And I think C9 does a great job of using Ash to be able to start fights. Yep. A lot of teams maybe are hesitant with their AD to start initiate fights in the mid game. So I think he has no problem with that. I think both this game and the third game, Arrows ended up winning the game for them at certain points. And I think that's huge because right now, Ash priority is like at an all time high in the season. <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah. Yeah, out of nowhere, like Korea's first picking Ash. NA's first picking Ash. Everyone thinks like Ash is the top tier AD carry now. And that's like Sneaky's first champion he really shined on in, in LCS was like they ran Ash Zyra bot lanes all the time. Yeah, and so he's fantastic on the champion. I'm done with this game. We're gonna move on. Yeah, I'm ready for game two, baby. Uh, game two literally can just read contracts carried. But yeah. let's start at the very beginning. Start the draft. Uh, is there anything you want to go over for this draft? Not in particular. I mean, this game they subbed in Ray, and so C9 takes J4, which is interesting. And I'm a little surprised, like, the Syndra blind early on by C9. Uh, but other than that, I didn't think it was that you bad. You know what's really weird for me? I think in, in situations where you have a player who is um, aggressive, or I would say a carry-oriented player like Ray, and then you have a player who's very good at tanks and frontline, like, impact, uh, and on the desk, actually, behind the scenes, we're calling it C9 Sword and Shield. Well, that's what they called it. Oh, is that what they called it? Did you not watch the duos feature? I didn't call that. I didn't watch that. Scar, yeah. it's one of the best pieces of video You're production that they. Right that now. they. Oh, I'm not. Oh, <laughs> I'm not my Rai Shinai. Right. No, no, it's it's seriously a good feature. I'd recommend you guys watch it. But in that, Ray calls himself the sword and he calls impact the shield oh well like i think that's a great analogy yeah and i think that if you're the sword you should want to counter pick your top lane yeah but the thing is they used impact on every blue side or every uh, no, red, red side, side and <laughs> used ray for every blue side which to me doesn't make much sense i can see it making sense in the world where like if you pick j4 like is there a super counter matchup that zig's gonna have to pair Kled. Like, i think Kled and gameplay do well Game Game, like, oh, do you think G GP does well? Gameplay maybe less so, but Gameplay typically does well into tanks in the first place. Yeah. And so I just thought, like, okay, Kled did really well. If you look at this matchup, like, Jarvan can't do anything. If you're maxing W on Jarvan, Kled just, like, keeps remounting. You're never going to be able to get the kill. So the only thing I can think of for why they go with Ray instead of Impact is because they don't want to blind a tank and then give Zig counterpick. So they blind, like, a semi-bruiser carry skill matchup, and they force a somewhat skill matchup, and then Ray just goes, is, just go even... Don't let Zig get a counter pick and then play from there. And for but for me, I think that a lot of situations like Jensen's fine blind picking his mid lane, and if you save the counter pick for Ray on the red side, you might be able to get more with it. Of course, it might be riskier. Right. So I mean, but the, what I'm saying is like if that's your strategy, maybe you just straight don't play impact because if you think the counter pick is better early on, oh, you know, on on red side, and then if you think okay, maybe we can just blind a skill matchup versus Zig, and and Ray will play it better because he's the better mechanical player. Like individual player, I think he. Honestly, that's, that's almost like I can a lot of people think he's the better mechanical player, but Impact has like shot calling and a lot of communication. I hear right. Ray Ray's English still isn't great, and if you know anything about um, what you call it, a lot of the wait the camera plays. Wait, what'd you do? Wait, what'd you do? I tried to flip it and didn't work. And what? Just died. Jesus Christ, Yuna! <laughs> just just remove it and re-add it to the scene. You see what we have to deal with with this guy? Like, and this is not just like an exclusive thing. Like, oops, Yuna messed up once. This is Yuna's day to day. Yeah, dude. Like every moment with this. Like, dude, you know, like, Yuna's other job. He works for ESL, and so after he works for ESL, he just comes work for us. <laughs> Jesus, Scar. That was pretty funny, actually. I'm always funny. <laughs> Yuna's like flabbergasted. Like, you, you cracked a joke that was pretty good. good. It doesn't turn on anymore. Did you re-add it to the scene? Yeah. Holy shit, dude. Let me let me get in there. <laughs> All right, our production slave number two, I tried. aka my co-host, will oh, now be attempting God damn it, dude. the great magic magical trick. We call this the darkness. <laughs> Hello, darkness, mild. I played that song. What were you adding before? Were you adding Elgato capture card instead of the webcam? I guess. <laughs> You're, you're a streamer! Streamers can't even set up streams. What are they good for? I was talking about this today. You should see Yuna's face right now. He's like, you're right, I am a streamer. You're just such a fucking streamer, dude. I try to, I try to appease the fans. Never appease the fans. They're, they're idiots. Hello! Oh, we gotta, how do I just move this? Alright, yeah. right, should I take your side now, Mark? We just if switch. you want to. Alright, I'm gonna switch sides with you. Technically, I did, the, did fix the, 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 the rifle... Technically, by messing up horribly, 
the rightful heir has returned to his throne. Welcome, all the people who observe on the left. I'm now on the superior side. Technically, I did just fix it. What were we even talking about? We were talking about game two. We were talking about the draft. Um, we talked about why you would want Ray for red or blue side. Right, right. You said, I, I'm back in it. I'm you with said, it. Okay, you, okay. And yeah. in the end, the end result was that um, I think that Ray will be getting is will be getting more and more play. Just right now, I think his English isn't great, and so really, really high pressure situations. Dignitas had this problem too. This split, like uh, the communication, isn't as good. Like they revert to like yeah. full Korean, and it's like oh, oh crap. So um, I'm hoping in another split, you probably gonna see Ray play like almost full time next split. Right, and I, I could see a situation where even if it's not with C9, like. I think C9's in a position where like Ray looked really good. He's number one on the slow key ladder. Everyone knows this dude's a beast. Like people are gonna go after this guy uh, probably in between splits and be like, we need a top laner. And so it's gonna be hard for C9 maybe to keep both. Because I don't think after Apex, a lot of people were like super high on Ray because he he obviously was skilled, but the team yeah. it, the team was not a team, and a lot of people faulted Ray for having like weird picks for doing it. But you see what happens with like. I mean, you can play around Ray in his carry-oriented style. Like, you can do that. So I think maybe... And, and he's not limited to just carry. It's like, he can play tanks. Yeah. He's driving max W first. Like, what else do you need? I think that he's flexible. I think maybe in Apex, he thought he had to carry every game. Because the right. team was just not very Yeah, it wasn't good. great. Uh, but in this situation, it's like, you got carries you can trust. And if, you can, and if that's the case, then he can just frontline like he wants to. Right. So, anyways, diving into the actual gameplay here, like we said, kind of the contract show. He goes mid early on, gets the flash. Well, it was it was a it was a roam with the support. So C9 roam mid, get the flash out of Ryu, and then later on they like with the flash down, uh, or they just regank it and get another kill. You talking about the right game? Am I talking about the right game? I'm no. Talking. This is this is a game where no, this is the right game where he goes bot lane. Oh, I'm thinking of bot lane. Yeah, 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 you're right. I was gonna be like, I don't say regank for a kill. I was thinking mid lane. Yeah, I was like mid lane. What the heck? It was no, bot lane. No, though. yeah, he he goes bot lane. Um, and he flashes trades flash with arrow, and yep. he comes back again. I think three minutes later and gets the kill. Yeah. And this is all contracts doing a bunch of work. In the meantime, Anori picking up kind of like a 15 CS lead in the jungle. Not super impressive, honestly. Mm -hmm. And really, the only thing Anori does the entire game is he gets a pick on smoothie when he walks up the ward too deep. Right. And, and that's pretty much it. And he, he, it wasn't like he was like, okay, I'm going to hard farm again in advantage over this guy. He was looking for plays, but fi like failing to find the opportunities. Like he, he went topside to try and sneak into lane, and he, he got spotted on a minion. And that like blew kind of that counterplay opportunity where you know the other junglers on the bot side right and i think that that's a a good thing to, to make because it's not like he wasn't he wasn't farming while the other person was ganking only like if that was the case that'd be good because then he'd be coming up like a level and a half yeah. ahead and he'd have an item lead however what ended up happening was he one person got plays made and he would try to make plays and it didn't work yeah he just got he just got out jungled out like first game not super hard it just felt like c9 as a team worked better around mid so he got outperformed in that sense, but this time it really did feel like Contracts was just like a way better jungler. Yeah, uh, so like it literally, just, I just go down the list, I'm like, okay, what did Contracts do? He went bot lane twice, got the kill, you know? He went top lane, got Graves, got first, uh, got the kill on Kled, which by the way, the Kled Jarvan lane was super scrappy. Like, yeah, that, Kled, was, that was fun to watch. Kled kept trying to go for remounts, and um, I think it's really uh, interesting because in the tank matchup, uh, Jarvan can't do enough damage to Kled before you remounts. Essentially, if you're full yeah. tank, you just don't do enough. You, That's why Kled's really good into tanks. Yeah, so you drop your combo, you get him low, maybe you get him off his, his mount, but then your, your, com like your, your spells are on cooldown, he just autos you a couple times, cues you, and he's back on the mount. Exactly, and I think that uh, it was super volatile, and Graves just went up there, shot him down, and then got the first tower. And then that was also that was uh, after that he he went mid as well because Anori goes mid like you said gets the pick on Smoothie who was going for Vision whatever and then Contracts is there for cleanup and actually turns like that that kill as well so Contracts affects all three lanes before the first fifteen minutes of the game if you're able to do that as a jungler you should probably win the game yeah and uh, they did the bot lane play where Jarvan TP down hit a nasty oh, ulti yeah. that trapped three people and he got a triple kill off of it and then they just, they literally just eventually. It actually, it was maybe a close team fight at the around the Baron, and Contracts pulls off a quadra kill, and the game's over. Right. I mean, after after they got that three for Oats, P1 did get like a couple picks, um, and they were like, yeah, like the shenanigans around Baron where C9 was like forcing really hard, but it didn't matter because after they got like that one, like the the, the game breaking fight was like 30 minutes in the game, and they they get the kill onto Ray, I think it was like early on, and then. 
contracts in the meantime is just finishing off Zig because the rest of the team was like chasing an Ezreal instead of finishing Zig off. And then contracts kills him. And then, yeah, it's, it's too easy from there. Yeah, I, I just think this is a situation where it's like contracts actually hard carried this game. Yeah, the, the, the quadra kill that Sneaky stole, I was like, he could have hand that over probably, right? Yeah. He could have hand that over. But, um... It's the playoffs, you can't... It's, it's the playoffs, you can't have any fun playoffs, guys. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm, I don't play for I would have taken that, dude. I feel like pentakills, especially on stage, have to be earned. If you're giving it to it by your team or the enemy team, you're just like, it's not even good, dude. It's not really a pentakill. You got you to fight for it. You got to take it from your team and their team. Both yeah. teams. <laughs> you're fighting nine people for that pentakill. And if you get it, that just makes it that much sweeter. Uh, or you just play APE. <laughs> No comment. no comment. All right, so I had nothing to say about this game. Afterwards. Yeah, I mean, both these games, like, P1 fell behind early on. They got, like, a couple picks in the mid-game on people because both times their comps were, like, relatively good at it. Like, Rengar, Varus, Karma, Kledori, like, you're going to find a kill or two. And they were good about doing that. But then C9 and 5v5 situations always outperformed them, like, really hard. Uh, and, like, a lot of times P1 would, like, win the fight initially and then overstay and, and lose. So, like, that time that Contracts got that pick off, they didn't, like, respect... Or at the time that, excuse me, Anori got the pick off early in this game. They overstayed and Contracts comes for a cleanup kill. So it just felt felt kind of bad watching these games because after the second game, you're like, there's no hope for P1. Right. Because they're not, they're not good enough in the early game anymore to like punish C9's bad early game. And C9 stepped up a lot. And they're not good enough at team fighting to punish the enemy team's good team fighting. Yeah, so it's like they don't match up well at all. Yep. Yeah. They don't have a distinct... A strength that beats, like, works well to the enemy's weakness. I think their strengths are similar, but they're just worse at, at it. Yeah, and I think that that was basically the story of the series. And then going into game three, P1 just get desperate. They know, <laughs> they know they're losing. They're like, fuck it. Throw anything in there. Yeah, and they pull in the mighty flex pick or substitute. Medios and stunt. They're just... Uh, to do... And honestly... Somehow I, I got... Six lines of notes on this game, despite the fact it was a 16-3 to three game. Oh, I don't know how I did that. Le legit, I, I, I start, had this game open, but let, let's start at the very beginning. So, I think the fact that C9 banned Kasten forced P1 to ban LeBlanc. LeBlanc right now is like a very big threat. I don't know if you uh, really, if you guys understand this champion, you have to have a pick for it, or you have to ban it. It's, it's a champion which is very threatening. And so when C9 bans Kasten, it forces P1 to ban LeBlanc in case... They first rotation with Blanca on the second end. They were scared of that. Also in the draft, the one thing I feel like happens quite a bit in the C9, which I've, I've not seen C9 lose, is they get the other team to pick Syndra and Jensen plays Echo. And the Echo-Syndra matchup is like slightly favored for Echo, but Jensen's such a good player and knows that matchup so well, I will almost always see Jensen just go off in that matchup. It definitely feels like... You're surprised that he ends up in that matchup that often? Yes. It's something where I watched non-stop and I'm just like he's just gonna smash this guy yeah and, and like everyone knows he plays Echo everyone knows Echo's good in Syndra it's not like some weird counter pick where it's like oh yeah I, I guess I didn't see that one coming and people end up in that matchup all the time like I don't know what you would have wanted to pick there but like do you just blind Ori or something maybe. like maybe I probably would have preferred the Ori blind over the Syndra cause uh but then C9 plays Ari or Syndra and, yeah, and they didn't do the Syndra Ori matchup well last game. Like I feel like P1 just got put in a really bad position, and they, they and their mid lane was already losing in the common matchups the entire series, anyways. Yeah, I mean this is this is the thing that we said about in general about Ryu was that like he's a really really good player, but you put him up against the, like the world class laners and he struggles a little bit. Yeah, and I mean we talked about Crown being the obvious one from Worlds last year, but like in general he struggles versus really competent laning mid laners. He's, he's much more of a playmaking guy, and if he can't get out of lane easily, and especially against C9, who super focuses mid lane, it, it's hard for a player like Ryu to thrive. Yep, and when you look at the start of the game, I actually thought, like, I thought this game was going to be P1's turnaround. And that's because I got baited by Meteos. Meteos is good jungle yeah. clear. I was like, wow, dude, he actually adapted this clear really well. Like, they, they, they pressured him by the enemy raids, which he knew the enemy would, team would start, and he goes in for the blue buff, and he takes it level one, or level, level two because he just clears the small raptor right. to get to yeah and i'm just like wow dude this is such a smart path for medias he's gonna take over this game and they, they failed uh what should we contracts fails the counter invade on his blue and they blow two summoners for one yeah and, then at, and he's behind levels and at that point you're thinking to yourself wow okay okay 
P1's got this, dude. Medios starting to turn around, and then... He did nothing. Medios had an awful game, let's be honest. Like, that first jungle clear, super good stuff. Should set your team up to, like, make a play, especially with the summoners blown top. Like, maybe Jarvan can, like, force something to start. Like, I don't know, you find a way. Nothing happened around the top lane. C9 are roaming. They, this, is, this is the game where they force reuse flash. And then eventually, when they hit sixes, uh, Sneaky shoots an arrow. And then they kill Ryu for the first time, kind of in the jungle while he was vision controlling. And then Meteos gets picked. And it's just, it's just all downhill. Yeah, Meteos gets picked to get Infernal Drake. And it's just... The only saving, like, good, decent play was... Uh, the bot lane? Yeah, Stunt comes in from the river bush when Sneaky's flash is down. Flash roots, misses the root, but the slow plant hits... And then uses the ulti, knocks up the ulti, kills Sneaky, and that's like the only like kind of saving grace from their team is that P one's bot lane looked okay this 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 game, and then I thought for most of the series they looked fine. Yep. it's exactly what we said. The the thing about Arrow was was like this guy's super 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 good, but he's not like really lane dominant, <laughs> and like against a lot of teams that's fine, but against C nine, like you can't help it that your rookie support roam somewhere he shouldn't gets and gets picked off. You can't help it that Meteos face checks near Baron, gets chunked out and like makes your team lose a fight. Like these are the things that were happening to the team because C9's a better team and Arrow as good as he is and potential MVP candidate, these are things that are outside of his control. Yeah. And I think that throughout the series C9 just had better vision control. They understand how to bait objectives and get right. picks, especially with Ash. Uh, and a lot of that relies around just getting pink wards up and camping the push with Ash and getting picks. But I think that um, this is a series where it was looking really hard for P1 to win from the get-go. And as the series progressed, all the greatest fears if you're a P1 fan kind of came true, which was they couldn't get anything going with the jungle matchup contracts played better than expected. And then uh, they just lost because they couldn't outperform the other team in P1's strongest time in area, which is the mid lane game. Yeah, and I think, you know, we were talking about it before, you know, last week. It's like, okay, Aero, uh, Ryu looked great because he was against, you know, Keen, who had a bad series, and Keen's super erratic, uh, and Ryu's pretty good. So, like, Ryu looked like a god that series, but then he just gets controlled because that's C9's game plan is literally control mid, and it works really well against them. You would hope Anori would have, like, snowballed imp or, uh, Zig a little bit more or maybe snowballed Aero, but they just like didn't have any synergy in bot or, or top. They, like he didn't get a play on either of those really. Yep, yeah, I think this is a series where Nori looked a little bit worse than they expected. Like I thought Nori came in pretty okay last series, but um, this series I was just like, similar to C9, Nori and Contracts play very similar roles. They have to, the laners themselves don't like do much by themselves. They need to work with the jungler to explode the game into the mid game. And, and and also also the vision control like dig is not like a super oh my god their vision control was great and i think that really impacted how much anori could do in these games because he's constantly having like oh there's another pink ward here there was that time that like there was deep there's just deep wards on him like all the time yeah and like it's a lot easier to do your job if you just have <laughs> if the enemy doesn't know what the hell you're doing exactly um this was a series where C9 looks good, and a lot of my doubts on their relative strength came from contracts. And I think their vision control was better this series than I expected, and their jungle played a lot better. And going to finals, this is really good if you're a C9 fan. Right. The way this game ended, just to finish it off, was like P1s just got super desperate for dragons, where they would like get a dragon and get picked off for it. So like, there's that one team fight where Sneaky lands another arrow, and like the team completely splits up. Like two trying to deal with Jensen, and the rest just get killed by the back line of C9. Then they they. Force really hard around Dragon again. Meteos dies. Meteos face checks around Baron. He get, like has to repel right away, and they lose another team fight. Get aced at 18 minutes into the game before like could even lose a Baron for how bad they were playing. And then like the game's just over. Yeah, this is a, this was a stomp by C9. Yeah, and, and like you said, I, I think this looks really good for them because they won in somewhat of a repeatable way, where it was like okay, they have. Two different top players with different styles, that's cool. Maybe there's still a little bit up in the air about exactly when is it the correct option to use which one. But then they have really good vision control. Contracts looks had like a really, really good series this time around. He's been looking better towards the end of the season. And then uh, their bot lane still just like beast. Like Smoothie had some nasty polymorphs. I think that this is a series where I don't think P1 really could exploit C9 in draft because I don't think they had the ability to do that in any... I don't know, it just looked like they couldn't do anything about that. I'm hoping in another series against C9, like maybe TSM or FlyQuest, whoever comes out ahead, which we should go talk about right after this. Right. Um, 
is able to put more pressure on C9 during the draft. Because it felt, really felt like C9 just kind of did whatever they wanted. They gave P1 everything that they wanted and they still did good. Uh, yeah, so why don't we move on to the prediction part of the show because I don't, I don't personally have too much more to say here. Yeah, I don't either. All right, so let's move on to the prediction portion. That's my job. Why are you using the touchpad? There's a mouse. Because I'm sitting on this chair. That's why you guys need me. Dude, he killed the stream. No. Yeah. He, 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 Wait, like, like he tried to no, no, flip no, no, no. the camera and it broke. It just turned black. People were pissed. I had to answer for the people. My so me, me and Star fans. sat on the opposite sides that we normally do. So then he tried to flip the camera and it just broke the camera. And I had to go and like re redo it all. By the way, just repping my boys that I got 23. Oh. Hey. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Uh, all right, so all right, let's go prediction segment. Prediction segment, TSM versus FlyQuest. Do you have too much to say on this? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, how many different ways can I say TSM will win this series? 3-0. <laughs> I, I don't know. Just because, not because I don't think they're the better team by far. It's just that I just don't know if I trust TSM in the first game of a, ser of a best of. That, I, I can that, see that, but I feel like... I, like, I always say I feel like TSM shouldn't drop the first game. And week after week, they disappoint me in that, in that segment. But like, so, so it's like... They're not even that bad in game one. They were like 500. They were like a little under 500. Right, but for a team that's supposed to be the most... They were 500 against everyone in the league. Yeah. If, if this team had a bad day, you still couldn't say TSM could beat them in the first but game. But like, they're a team that, like, it's playoffs, dude. It's a, different, it's a different environment, you know? Like, you get more hyped up. So, like, they came out flat in a lot of those games ones, and, like, Sven would just die over and over. And, like, here they're going to be having prepped for FlyQuest for a week. They're going to have much more focus, I think. Like, I don't think they'll come out flat in game one. I, I, I want to say the exact same thing, but week after week, TSM has disagreed with my the statement. I'm saying 3-0. I'm saying 3-1. All right. So it basically comes down to that. But to get into more of the actual, uh, like, matchup analysis, um, Hanser, potential MVP candidate going up against Balls. Which, well, to be fair, he's one of the best players on the team. Right. Ball, balls is, I think, yeah, one of the most consistent, we should say. Because I think Moon and High, when they're playing well, are like, way more important to the team winning. But at the very least, like Balls has not been a big problem for them. And the thing is, though, he does play some carry champions, like the Camille, like the Rumble. He has like a pocket GP a little bit. But none of that stuff is super impressive. And if you go skill matchup versus Haunter, I think he gets destroyed. And so I think you'll see a lot of tank play out of him. And I just don't see how that gets them any advantage. Right. Uh, so, on the top lane, I agree with you completely. Hotster, MVP, he won, right? It's not out yet. Oh, I have no idea. Okay. Potential MVP. You're here to hear first. Leaked. No, Leaked. I legit, Star with the early information. I, I literally have no it. idea who won. Anyways, so Hotster, uh, potential MVP candidate. This guy is a monster. It's been a while since I've said a player can outshine Bjerg. Alshon Bjergsen on, on the team. On his own team, yeah. Yeah, and usually because if you're on the team with Bjergsen, you're never going to be the best player because Bjergsen's that good. And it was like maybe double lift. Like, yeah, th those double lift had that one run where he was good. And yeah. the only, uh, to be fair, during that run, I voted for Bjergsen as well. And people were just like, how could you ever vote for Bjergsen over double lift? Do you see what he's doing with his AD carry mechanics? And I'm just like, you guys are just, you guys have been so like, Spoiled by the fact that Bjergsen's in the region and he's won two MV MVP votes that you don't really look at how he's playing. He got even better that season. Yeah, he, it, his, his like map pressure that season yeah, was, was god -tier. actually unbelievably good. And yeah, yeah Double F had an amazing season, but it was like Bjergsen exists, so he doesn't get it. Yeah. And this is a season where you're just like, I think Hansa's better than Bjerg, and that's how good he plays right now. And okay, so then moving into the jungle matchup, I think we Ooh, talked about close. this. This is probably where, similar to their previous series, where FlyQuest has a potential advantage. Because as much as I think Sven works really well with TSM, I think individually he has some times where he can get picked, up, picked on a little bit by the other jungler. He has gotten demolished in a pure jungle standpoint by more oh. times than any other jungler in the league. Because I, 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 like other junglers will lose like every game we're like lose a lose like a little bit but for some reason and this there's, yeah there's he, like a there's like a running joke about sven inting a random game and like that actually happens like yeah he, he'll, just, he'll have good games and he's not like always behind the way some junglers like that guy, that guy just gets out jungled all the time but he gets blown up sometimes no there are games where you're just like sven is like 
he just ran to the enemy team twice, and then suddenly the enemy jungler is 4-0. Yeah. And sure, a lot of people remember, like, the Dardock games where he got blown up, but, like, even, like, the Lyra game. The Chaser game. Yeah, the Chaser game. You're just watching Sven, you're just like, oh, God. Like, I think, I'll, like... He, I mean, to be fair, he usually bounces back, because this oh. usually happens in game one or game two. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of their first game losses are because of Sven's, like, kind of more inconsistent play. I will say he's still a great jungler, especially if he gets Lee. I think his Lee, whew, Oh, like, yeah. Amazing, incredibly. But I just worry because he's had these games where it's just like, oh, you just like to run into the enemy team. Yeah, and I think that's that's the concern. It's just like that game might happen, but because he usually bounces back, I'm not concerned about tilting out of him. Like he he doesn't seem to tilt. It, uh, but game to game, maybe in game a little bit, but right. And for me, that's like my why I have one loss is because even though TSM does win the first game, I don't really believe in superstitions. You know, mm-hmm. I, there's a reason they do that, and a lot of the first game losses are because in that first game. Sven Skaring gets hard out jungled and feeds. Right. And then Bjergsen gets desperate, tries to help him, and then feeds as well. And then the game is over. Yeah. So I, I can see that. Moon, a little inconsistent, but it feels like if he gets on like his good champs and, his gr- and feeling himself, he, he starts playing really well. Like his, his, I know he was like a little scared about his Eve game, but I thought he did fine on it. And mm-hmm. I, I thought his Rengar games were incredible. So like, probably going to be super high rate Rengar priority this series. Might even reach band status like really early on. We'll have to see. Uh, but that's something to look out for. And... And Moon is, is he does kind of need some help to like get off the ground. He's not quite like the, I'm in your shit and I'm killing you. Like It's usually like I, I turn a gank or two or something like that. Um, what do you think about the mid lane matchup? Because this one's kind of interesting. Oh, I mean, I feel like High will be down 20, like 10 to 20 CS every game. And it's like, did he make plays in the side lanes? That's how I think that matchup shakes out. It's like, it doesn't matter the matchup at all in terms of champion matchup. Like, Bjergsen will be ahead basically. Maybe if you get like a super skilly assassin matchup, maybe High can play those ones a little bit better, uh, just from like knowing when to go in or not. But it's still not likely. Yep, I think Bjergsen has the edge, both in every, every aspect that, except for roaming. I think Bjergsen has the edge, and, and then High is like High's roaming is like a lot. It's like double down. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's it's not like the way he's pushing into him and he leaves lane. And you're yeah. just like, what, what is he doing? High roams more frequently with plays that have like just much higher payoffs and much lower losses. Whereas like when Bjerg roams, it's like I push my wave in. I went top side to meet my jungler, who's also or like my top laner, who's also pushing yeah. his wave in. And we look at maybe doing a dive. Bjerg's uh, play is so, a lot of times I think of it as very methodical. It's like clinical. Yeah, exactly. You're just like okay, so he coordinated with his jungler to move. In in to get secure vision and then rotate Balin to do a four man dive. Yeah. And then and then as he pushes in the mid wave, <laughs> with high it's like, um, so I ba- I, can, I can physically leave my lane right now. Yeah, Should I do it? No. High is like I backed uh, when the wave is pushing to me and instead of running back to soak up two two waves, I'm gonna run the bot lane yeah. just straight through the lane and see what happens. And he does. He's like, okay, we won the game. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like, and then sometimes it doesn't work and it's like okay. We lost the game. Yeah, I, I think that a lot of this mid lane matchup right now just, for me, depends on the jungler. Because I think Moon, especially, had such a great series. Like, I guess great, like, games three, four, and five. Yeah. Uh, that he could really hard carry the series. However, he was against probably the worst jungler in the split. I don't think Smithy's been playing well at all. Mm-hmm. And so I don't want to go too far in his praise. I do think, though, that if they're going to win this series, it's going to be off Moon enabling Hyde to be able to do what he does. Right, and then if you look at the bot lane, I think this is not the as bad of a matchup for FlyQuest as it could have been with the other teams in playoffs. Like, if you look at C9's bot lane and P1's bot lane, you're like, I'm really scared. But against TSM's bot lane, not terrified i yeah. think FlyQuest bot lane is one of the weakest in the league um but if they get their comfort picks like lemon gets his karma or a malzahar or something like his lulu i'm not super impressed by but it's just one of the best champions like maybe if they get decent lane matchups FlyQuest bot lane goes even against tsms and it, like you said it really comes down to like did high and moon get down there and take that part of the map over yep uh i think that i i guess for the most part it's just gonna be I would be worried about FlyQuest's ability to bounce back, but they did it against COG in a situation where I thought it would be under the highest amount of mental, mental stress. Right. And so I guess they have uh, also that in their uh, like pocket, their ability to make a comeback, even when you least expect it. I think coming in, everyone had no expectations for the COG game. Everyone I talked to was just like, COG will win. It's yeah. just, it just because it's COG, like how many games they drop along the way. And it's like, oh, oh no, like FlyQuest actually swept this game. In this series, it's even more one-sided. I think people are just like, does TSM drop one or zero games? Yeah. It's not even a question of them dropping two. And I think that 
that's something they have. You know, they're the dark, they're the dark, the darkest of horses here, and I'm just <laughs> curious to see if they can pull it out again. Yeah, I think they, they have more of an X factor than TSM has. Really, like, TSM's X factor is like when things get serious, we usually play pretty well. We step up for playoffs. We've been in every finals. This is our time of the year. Seen, uh, FlyQuest has that kind of crazy like, well, we might just win because we, we do stuff. Uh, it's kind of crazy to me that these semifinals could be like really big blowout games because today was a 3-0, tomorrow potentially 3-0. Um, do you see that? Do you see that continuing throughout the rest of the? But I think both the the finals and the third fourth game will actually be pretty good. I think they'll be much closer. I I think the finals, assuming. I mean, like we keep saying, FlyQuest is gonna get smashed. Like if they win this way and then they go into finals, like would I be like, oh yeah, C9's got a really tough opponent here? It depends how they look, I guess. But I I would say at that point, like okay, maybe maybe it's gonna be a lot closer than I would initially think. But. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the one thing I'd say is, uh, I think, depending on how FlyQuest looks here, I think the finals, assuming it's TSMC9, will be close. If FlyQuest gets smashed here, going up against P1, That's may maybe the th third, fourth place match, I'd say, is not going to be that close. But then again, P1 got smashed today, so I, I have to see how FlyQuest looks. All right, all right. Um, I mean, aside from that, is there anything else you want to say about the series? Nope. Uh, I definitely was a little disappointed in how it turned out. I was at the studio today with Yuna, and I was hoping we would hang out there for a little bit longer, but it was... It's Two pretty quick games, you know, just a little bit past 35 minute games, and then we had to head back here to set up for PLT, so not quite as uh, fun of a day as I was hoping for. It's, it's going to wrap it, up here it's in a actually minute. It's 4 o'clock, and it's, it's still bright out. It usually, uh, post lead time ends around like 7.30. Yeah, we get, we get dinner. Yeah, now it's like, I'm not even... It's not, I, I need a donut, I'm kind of hungry. Okay, well... Fion gave me a donut, that's all I had today. <laughs> I'm still a little bit full from lunch. Um, but yeah, that's it. We're going to move into the uh, question and answer section of the show. You want to do one? Yeah, sure. I mean, we're so early today. Get everyone in here. Josh can stop eating peanut butter or whatever he's eating. What are you eating? Ice cream. Ice cream. So uh, that's why I laughed as I look to my right and Josh is just like shoving shit in his mouth. How was your magic? That's my question and answer for you. There's oh. so much clothes here. Um. <laughs> Wait, I was actually going to ask what, what uh, Josh was doing today. That he's so, yeah, right? um, then... one of my friends had um, all of Model Masters, so one, two, and three. So we did one pack of each into a draft. Oh. oh that sounds that pretty sounds cool. Oh, that good that sounds so good. Like, do, you, do you want to open I my pack? we went. You guys suck. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds cool, man. I like it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, if you guys have any questions for us about the series, NA, random anything, let us know in chat. Usually, we've been forgetting recently to tell us to tweet at us before the show starts. Oh, yeah. That's usually Josh's job, but when he's not here. Yeah, when he's not here and he's replaced by someone who can't even operate his hands. That's, we, that's we not got, fair. We got, I realized what I did wrong. I was, I was like one click away from saving everyone. But Dude, then... you were one click away, but you're trying to add Elgato capture card <laughs> instead of thing called webcam. <laughs> I don't, dude, I thought an auto would put it to the webcam, but when you open up the properties, it's at Elgato fucking whatever the hell it's called. Yep, mm -hmm. capture card. Yep. <laughs> but it's not fair. Ah, uh, yep. At the end of the day, you guys still switched, and everyone is happy. Which team do you think is best for MSI? CLG. <laughs> CLG, baby. Our friendship. You can still say it. Just because they're out doesn't mean that they wouldn't have been the best team. Fuck them. No, it just means uh, they're <laughs> yeah. I, I actually think it's probably going to be TSM. Yeah, but I I, don't, I think that the chances of them getting as high highs as COG did is impossible almost because I think they're a team that like they just play standard like they're a very good team fighting team they play well you know I I feel like against better teams who play the same who play like okay we 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 love the team fight as well um, we just butt heads and the teams the other teams would come out ahead do the better like just individual skill and. Teamwork, you know. And yeah, I think that CLG is a, a team that was like they were explosive in ways that you were just like, they can do that. He can play this soul champion that well, like stuff like that. You know, you're just like, wow, dude. No one else plays soul. Like one other person in the region plays soul at all. So what I'd say is it actually depends a little bit on what other teams make it. Cause like if you watch the KT series yesterday, oh my god, that was they disgusting. obliterated bot lane. Yeah. Deft was like 
Oh my god, Deft is so good! In the first two games, they took the first turret at, uh, at eight minutes and five minutes, which means... Five minutes? Yeah. Five minutes. And Dude. so that meant that for those two games, the, the first tower was, was like only Ash alive for 13 minutes in the entire two, like, two games. Like, in both games. But really? That's yeah. not that bad. So what, what I'm saying with this is that, like, if you put TSM's bot lane against that, I'm scared. Yeah. So, like, depending on who, what teams go from each region, like, I'm a little scared for TSM's bot lane, where while I do think right now TSM might be the better team than C9, depending on how TSM looks tomorrow, if they don't look like their map play is significantly better than C9, I might say C9 would better represent North America. Just because, like, they wouldn't, like, get their bot lane demolished or something, and, like, Sven won't get torn apart by, you know, a uh, score or something like that. Whereas yeah. I feel like... While C9 doesn't have the team play down, they're better individually, right? I think we can agree for the most part on that. Yeah. So, assuming that when NA just doesn't do that well, I would rather see it be like, ah, the team play wasn't quite there, and like we got we got torn well, apart. My question to you is, do you expect NA to do better at Worlds or better at MSI? I expect them to do better at Worlds. Ooh, this year? Oh, then, I thought you meant like MSI this year compared to Worlds this year. Oh yeah, I, I, I did. Because last year, uh, NA did really well at MSI, you know? And yeah, so but that was that was like a, a so we were talking about this before. Like CLG just played hot, right? Like they were not like a super god tier team. They played what? They played well. They were hot. They were streaking. They were doing well. Yeah, like oh, I don't think they were super super good. SKT was like on a downward. Thing. And and yeah, SKT like I barely like limp like, limped into groups. Yeah. They, they, they like they, they were last place. Yeah, they didn't look good in like that. Well, they also didn't look good in their own region. Like everyone thought Rocks was gonna go, and then SKT oh, yeah. upset yeah, them. Yeah. That too. And it was like some crazy things. So, like I think. This year, if you look at the teams that might represent us right now at MSI, and the teams assuming, you know, double if rejoins TSM and TSM's better and like C9 has an extra split together, I think teams will be better for us at Worlds. In in, in four months or whatever, five months. Okay. I feel like the extra time will help them a lot. Yeah, like TSM, C9, TSM, TSM, Team Liquid, TSM. Yeah, maybe Team Liquid turns it around, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Good jokes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude. Uh. God damn. Dude, there's just no yeah. way, like, as like a, as an American, I'll never get my hopes up for Worlds, ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that you said you were about to say as an American. Yeah, that, that, that question, like, like that question is like, how do you want to lose at MSI? Right. Do you want your team to get abused by better players, or do you want to get outplayed after, like, through team play? That, that's, like, how that feels to me. <laughs> that's kind of the two, like, sides of the coin right now. Oh, God. Anyways, should we actually answer a question, maybe? Yeah, we, there's we no, well, that was a question. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't make that one I, up, I, I, dude. I deviated. I'm sorry. No, it's good. I just loved in the beginning, people were just putting Lyra's name in there. Just like... <laughs> yeah, no. We're not going to talk about him. Unless we should talk about him for some <laughs> reason. But you got to give us a reason. You can't just say his name. Uh, all right. Yeah, ask us some questions, guys. Oh, I heard... So someone says, will NA win Worlds before League dies? I heard you had a prediction that you said NA I mean, will win... Five, no, I said in five years, I think it'll be competitive. Oh, I thought you said within the next five years, NA will win a world. No, I'm not Ember, dude. I'm not going to say like within the next X years. No, we're we're going to kiss the Ember. Summoner's Cup. You know, I think that uh, in five years, it'll be competitive. You know, right now, we're struggling to make it like out of groups consistently with our teams, right? Uh, I got, Have we not well, made it? Well, it's C9 makes it out of yeah, groups, C9, right? Because yeah, yeah. like, uh, KSM comes in high, everyone hypes him up, and then they fail. And then, and then you're they... just like, oh, I guess C9 gets it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I, I think that, like, like let, let's consistently get out of groups into, like, quarters and then semis before I say anything. I think, overall, it's looking very promising because every year, I think, uh, the infrastructure in North America is just really good, like, on an upwards trend. Especially yeah. when you compare it to stuff like Europe. Like, Europe has a lot of talented players, I feel, but a lot of their orgs just feel very, like, what are not they as good. Yeah. yeah. And, and part of that, to me, also comes down to player attitude because, like, you don't hear, like... You'll hear stuff coming out of orgs where it's like, oh man, this guy's just a treat to work with. Like, I love working with this player. He's got such a great attitude. You hear that a lot for NA teams, but like a lot of EU teams, you don't hear that coming out of their top teams. Like, you might hear it out of Splice or something like, oh man, they're, they're really great. Or like Unicorns of Love, you might hear that. But like, yeah. you don't hear it out of G2. Like, man, all these guys, they're just like, they're all just super nice guys. <laughs> who just you know, They all like have a great <laughs> attitude. <all> nice. <laughs> Nice and you. I admit I don't follow the European scene that well, so maybe I'm missing the storyline there, but like I don't hear that that much. In general, I feel like the organizations from Europe are just like super quiet, right? Like how much do you see like content wise out of those guys? H two what? That's the only thing That's I like see. That's the only thing. Like, yeah, I, I think the biggest PR from from Europe and the region as a whole is like Rocat's Reddit guy. And then that's Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah that guy. That, that no. guy's actually a monster. But aside from him, like 
That's it. I mean, there's like the unicorns a love guy who just dresses up like a unicorn. Yeah, oh, yeah but yeah. I mean, <laughs> and always hits Reddit. And I'm just like, <sighs> it's been going on for like three years. Yeah, they love people it, are though. still laughing. I guess that's fair. Like people, people just spam the same old memes. Like, who wards kill the ward. TSM chat. Here tomorrow, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I said I don't see much coming out of them, you know. And yeah. just in general, like this is stuff I hear behind the scenes because it it feels like uh, NA and E both have had ego problems in the past. But as NA has developed infrastructure wise, like it's becoming more acceptable to be to work with coaches. Whereas yeah. whereas I feel like in Europe, it's still like. I don't get along with these players well. I don't really trust this coach. And that's a vibe I get when I like, like yeah, when talk you, to the players or when I look at the players. It's like, like oh, man, what went wrong in, in, in TSM at Worlds? And all the players like, man, I, I fucked this thing up, dude. It's not your fault. It's on me. Like, every player was like, I messed up. And then, like, H2K, like, you just hear, like, a little bit of a blow-up story about, like, what happened with you guys at semis? And well, it's like, well, we had Forgiven. Well, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forgiven's like, I'm on any team. What do you think? There was, like, some interview where, like, one of the teammates oh, just, like, yeah. blasted another teammate. And I was just like... Oh, wait, that was a Forgiven. Was, it that, was that Forgiven? I was just like, wait, holy shit. Wait, you remember shit. that poll? I think it was released by ESPN where it was, like... It was, like, something like, who's the worst teammate to work with? And it was, like, Forgiven. Was yeah, like, 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 90% of the people voted him. Oh, you mean, like, the, the anonymous thing? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is not, like, a. if you missed what he's talking about, it's not, like, a poll by fans voting on. It's, like, they anonymously talked to players in the e- European scene and asked them, and everyone was just, like, Forgiven. Forgiven. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, Behind every meme is, like, a little bit of truth. You know? Yeah, usually. <laughs> just, like, every stereotype. Yeah. Whoa. That's right. That's, that's, that's why, yeah, it's stereotypical. I'm a white guy. Of course I'm like a little bit of a racist. Like, there's a little <laughs> bit of truth behind it. It's, oh, just, yeah. it's just super meta and proving my point. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I hate you guys. All right. Hey, what mid-season change are you looking forward to? I haven't, I haven't looked at them. You look at them? You look yeah, at the mid-season changes? Yeah, I, I actually did a review on them. It took me uh, 30 <laughs> minutes. It'll be on my YouTube soon. Just a little shot. <laughs> Hey, go for it, dude. Because uh, no, I, I haven't, I haven't they're, looked they're, at it. They're changing Rift Herald to become a, a summonable inventory item where when you click it, it runs down the lane and beats down the other tower. Oh, yeah. Oh, I and saw that. Just, just like the Heroes of the Storm yeah, thing. Yeah, and, like, and I was just yeah. like, I'm really worried for that stuff because it's a really hard thing to balance. It's either like useless and like a jungler walks up and smites it, or, or like, <laughs> or, or it's like it's so like unbeatable. It's so hard because uh, if it's gonna be as tanky as the current Rift Herald, that thing takes a long time to kill. If you have to, yeah. does, does you have to like uh, hit the back? No, you, you, no, you do. You Wait, do. What? That's like what. That's like the mechanic they'll have like when you're pushing up. I'm like, oh god, Wait, how are so you? You have to like walk past your turret, walk past, past the line yeah. while yeah. five people are grouped up there and be yeah. like, yeah, just hit the back a little bit. Yeah, and so I'm just like really scared. It looks like a pissed off scuttle crab, which I love. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. like the little. I thought that was. I thought that was a Photoshop yeah. when I saw that because no, I just saw someone tweet yeah. that. You, you, you can see. You know, it has less damage and less health, but you can see see it. But I mean, even though you can see see it, it's just a balance for me. A balance nightmare. You know, I do like the fact that they're trying to promote Rift Herald being uh, like a useful, useful, like something <laughs> you take if you're if you're not immortals. But, you know, the, the difference between immortals taking Rift Herald and every other team in North America is like a like. Factor of eight or something you like that. You mean like old immortals? No, like, th- yeah, no, this immortals. This, oh, you mean how often they went for Rift Herald? No, the, how often they went and got Rift Herald. Yeah. The immortals did it more times than, all, than like almost every other team combined. It was like something insane. I remember someone told me that sound. I was like, I guess it makes sense. Like, Dardock and Flame just don't get it. And they like give it to Dardock or Flame and just... Like, yeah. Like, I understand why, but like no one took that shit. Like, seriously. Well, yeah, so like, obviously Rift Herald is not good right now, but I don't know if I like the idea of making it this like weird, like, push bot thing. summonable push bot thing. Like, I wouldn't have minded if they kept it more of like trying to encourage individual playmakers on the top side of the map. Like, I like that idea a lot more than like, hey, we need another neutral objective that helps you push. Yeah, I feel like they went between like two just like things that are just hard to balance, right? Like, because the current Rift Herald buff is hard to balance because like, how do you make someone have an advantageous lane more? Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, that was so bad. It was like, like they got the Riptail buff, and, and then, then you just get would be fucked. like, you can't lane against Yeah, them. yeah, that it's just impossible. Awful. Yeah, that, that, so yeah. that doesn't feel good, right? So then now they're going for this, like, push thing, which could probably equally and, feel and just And the as thing bad. is, I bet you they're thinking, like, oh, you know, the top player can get this, and you can just use it to split push. When it's in act- all actuality, the jungler's going to take it. And at some point, like, you're the 15 minute man. mark, yeah. you're going to fit five man and just press the button and be like, try to stop us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. I, I like the idea of like helping individual one v one ing. 
I'm not excited about another like. <sighs> here's another AFK push thing. Like, so we got ZZ Rot, we got Banner Is of it Command. Is it AFK push thing? Does it push on its own? So yes, like, it's literally your yeah. ult. It ignores champions, so it's literally York ult that doesn't hit champions. So he just runs down the there, Yeah, like oh, really? Banner of Command, ZZ Rot, this piece of shit, Baron buff. Like everything is like let's just. Uh, every objective should help just push. If if, if, he, if they just made an item where like when you hit it, like the enemy AD carry just dies, I probably would have preferred that. What? What? It's called no. It's <laughs> <man. That's> called, <laughs> called Hex Tech Gunblade. Yeah. Not for me. Or yeah. Hex Tech Gunblade. Gun yeah. But it's like you don't click on anyone. You just have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give us, give, us, give us some more questions, chat. Thoughts on SKT versus SKT, please. What the fuck? SKT you... versus KT, SKT probably. KT. No, that guy's just gonna make fun of him. Oh. <laughs> All right. Come on, chat. You gotta think about what you're gonna say. Man, chat sucks today. Yeah. What is wrong with you guys? What the hell is this? Is Yuna thing? single? Is Yuna yeah. single? You never answered my question. Yeah. No, we're not. I, I answered here. my question. We're not answering I, here. You asked for me to go first. You never answered that question. We're not answering no, here. well, that's your fault for not answering it. Oh, oh, chat's starting to pick up a little bit. No, no yes. you suck. You suck. Fuck, Fuck you, Mark. Yeah, Why Mark am I sucks. sexually harassing Yuna over Twitter? Oh, yeah, that was hilarious. That's pretty funny. That? Yeah. I, got, I got harassed after that. I, I like I got you see my, my tweet at base Yuna? <laughs> what? I, I saw it, dude. My Twitter at base Yuna. Shut up. Stop <laughs> plugging yourself. What is the best NA roster ever? Is that... It's... Just it would TSM be season. TSM season, uh, season six four? summer. Season five? Yeah, yeah. It's season a, six summer. It's a five or six this. summer. Was yeah, it was. Team? It was just last year, guys. It's 2017. Yeah. You rewind a little bit. And Europe, Europe's best team was Fnatic with. Uh, Ooh, that's a better question. What Europe's best team? Yeah, the Huni ran over version uh, with Fnatic. I thought you was think that was team. better than old Cyanide, Expecte, oh, Soaz? Maybe, maybe. I was thinking that, maybe that, that one. That was season, a, season three yeah, was season three. They had a nasty yeah. roster, actually. Yeah. And who'd they have in the bottom lane? Was it Yellow Star? It was, it was and, Push uh, You. Oh, Remember that guy? God. Oh, the, yeah. The, guy, the quirky mastermind. The guy who like got replaced by the end of the split. That yeah. guy, I felt bad. I think maybe you could say season two and a half at IPL5 when they had Reckless. And they had that crazy deep run at IPL5. Yeah. That Fnatic might have been the best Fnatic. Because it was literally that team, but instead of Pushy, you had uh, Reckless. Reckless. Yeah. I loved the Moscow 5 storylines back in the day. Dude, oh, Moscow yeah. 5 was like the yeah. bad boys of the league. Yeah, yeah. I loved that team. They're yeah. like, we don't have a gaming house. We're just some five Russian dudes who just play. Yeah, to be fair, know. a lot of people didn't have gaming houses either. That was at a time where Well, only, it was like when it was starting to trend yeah, only where TSM everyone... Yeah, had the New York gaming house. Yeah, but like season two, everyone was starting to like ramp up into it. And season yeah. three was like the first season of LCS. And yeah. they flew to Russia and back. They were like... Permanently traveling. Yeah, yeah. They like didn't scrim and they just showed up. They're like, what's good? What's good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. That was, that was, yeah. yeah. He literally played Warwick Top so many times he got banned. And when they got yeah. banned, he was like, ha, I just started laughing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was so funny. Yeah, they were, yeah. everything about them was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I would not put them as a potential like best team in Europe was because they thrived in an era where like, Korea didn't super exist yet. Yeah, Korea had an. I don't think did Korea even have a server yet? Yeah, well, because season cause season, right? season, season two is like they. That's when M five came up and like that's when Korea really started because yeah. that's like the first couple OGNs and like you know CLG even went over there and played in them and oh, like yeah that's right uh, Azubu Frost and Azubu Blaze hey, were like super good. Azubu Frost went over to play in them too. Hello. How how they do? Yeah, yeah. How, we how's did that? we did like the same as CLG. You're meaning you guys didn't get out of groups? Yeah, we didn't get out of groups. Yeah, that's, that's what I remember happening. <laughs> I, said, I said CLG EU. Because oh, they, oh, yeah. they got to the finals. Yeah, and then there was no way they're going to lose with Zero 2 0. Did they get reverse swept? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Did they get reverse they, swept? They, they, yeah. It, it was, went full five games. And it was it Diana was, blind pick, and like Froggenet never played Diana, but he thought it was busted. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, I, I'm telling you, like, it was. Dude, the league scene back then was hilarious. Yeah, I don't, I like any team like pre season three. I have a hard time being like they were super like god tier because yeah, it's but... like the game wasn't super developed and like people, people didn't take against... you guys yeah, didn't give scrim serious yeah, no, no, at all. No, I'm definitely for that. Like I think the the entrance of SKT in season three is like when you were just like oh shit, there's yeah. a team that's that's like, like league has officially become an esport. Yeah, that, before that, that it's dudes. That, like, that's a team where you look at and that they were definitely the best team in the world, right? Like it yeah, wasn't even it, close, no, it was that. like. 
it was like these guys are just on a different level. They play the game differently. They just like pick your ass off all the time. Fakers, you're like, oh, it was gross. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember like it was like a debate between them and like the season four at Samson White. And potentially Samsung Blue, but not really. Not really. Um, and between, like, the best team to ever exist yeah. during their era. And so, yeah, when SKT during that Season 3 was when I was season just like... Season 3 was just, like, so nuts. There was that one sequence at Worlds where they started in first-tier yeah. mid-turret and got all the way to the inhibitor. Oh, yeah, it was, like, it was, like, from minute 9 to, like, minute, like, 13 or something like yeah, that. It, it was just like, kept picking people off. It was, like, Fager hits another charm. They all kill that guy. Oh, yeah. Right. They got, like, they killed, like, six people over the course of the push. It was, like, what the hell? People were just respawning and running it back down mid. Yeah. I, I actually... Was probably watching the most amount of esports in season three, season four. Like that was like the time where like like eighty carries could pop off super hard. Like I remember when. Yeah, uh, what time? I remember. <laughs> what a time to be alive, dude! I remember. Like that I just game. remember yeah. what's his face no. uh, from China, just like Uzi. He, yeah, Uzi. Yeah, what am I saying? Uzi comes out and he's just like hard carrying his team. I was just like, oh my god, this guy's amazing. The, like, the best thing about Uzi is like some of his like his like. Events up to worlds were always like not great. Not great. And, so, and then he gets yeah. to worlds. He has the biggest world buff yeah, ever. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you watch this guy. Like, oh, he just one v five. Oh, another game. All the games he played, he just gets. It's actually insane. His yeah. season four Twitch games, like, oh my god. He was just like his team. Like everyone was dead. Everyone was like one three and something, and he's like nine and two or something crazy. Yeah. And like the whole team comp is like Ori, Lulu, like <laughs> <laughs> they're like keep him up. Caring go us. go. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I don't know. Some, something about, like, that era where, like, I feel like individual players shined way more, you know? Like, and, like, teams had kind of interesting identities based off of their star player. Like, I, I remember, you know, Mac Noon, his heyday, where, like, it was just, like, super top-centric gameplay. And then, like, uh, yeah, Uzi's team was super bottom -head. You know, like, so, like, different teams had different avenues of victory, and it yeah. felt interesting. Even that way, like, CLG EU, like, it was, like, the, the like the play the late game, frog and yeah. hard carry, play Karthus, like, yeah, just... Yeah, have to ban Anivia, because yeah. otherwise yeah. it'll stall out the I game. I think like... as the game got more developed, it's also been, like, I think the game has been pushed so far into the idea that we have to team fight. Yeah. A lot of pe teams are really hesitant to be able to go, like, to, if you slip push, you slip push into a where, way you, where you flank, the team fight, like that's the position, and so I think that Riot's kind of done it like that, where they take an individual skill and kind of like homogenized a lot of like the play, especially with Baron B, it's harder to split push. Yeah, and so generally it's just like right now you just beat other people five v five, and yeah. if you don't, you have to be playing like a better team or have to have a better shot caller or something like that to be able to, to successfully do like the other stuff. I think it was a combination of that. Like I, like Riot has even outwardly said we want to push teamwork more. Right. And then I think as people got more developed, they stopped like they understood like risk reward more and they stopped just doing as much dumb shit. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, you know the one thing I realized when people overall got better as, as a team? I, I used to do this all the time in seasons 3, 4, and 5. I As the assassin, I'd walk through lane into the bottom bush and kill the AD because he and he because he'd be pushing up. I used to do this every single game because ADs are just greedy as shit. They always go for the CS bot lane. And th the last season and like the last like half year, I've tried to do that. And ADs have stopped doing that, and I'm just like, people are getting better. This is the definitive thing that I'm just like, for people are getting better at the game. On the competitive side, the thing that like for me was like people got better was like when people started trading dragon for top turret for a while everyone just, just dragon around it dragon. was like rumble is the best champion in the game because you can't lose a dragon fight at six game's over if you give up rumble and it's like eventually people were like why don't we just not fight them at dragon and go to top turret yeah. and take it for it took free. a long ass time too because like teams would constantly just like kind of like dragon, dragon fights and dragon and fights like, were the thing like everyone just grouped well, and fought for dragon i mean sometimes they just didn't even try to fight. They're like, oh god, we're losing guys, but we don't want to give up the dragon, so we'll just posture around and then watch them take dragon and then yeah. go back to our lane. <laughs> yeah, and like to be fair, dragon back then was worth gold. It yeah, was not yeah. worth like these like stacking buffs and all this weird stuff. But at the same time, everyone would much rather lose dragon or go for some insane smite steal instead of like flipping your bot lane to the top side and trading. I think that and that was a C, the time period where like C9 with high that, yeah, was like C9, the most dominant. C9, I remember when we played them, no one else did it that much. Where like, if they didn't want to fight a dragon, they just took your top side turret. And I, yeah. for the longest time, everyone's like, how do you stop this? And it's like, oh, you, you, you don't. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a trade. It's, it's them playing the game correctly. Yeah, right? yeah, no. They're, they're like way ahead of their time. And yeah. I think like a lot of teams like that were really dominant back then, like Moscow 5, for instance, even old SKT, old Samsung were way ahead of their times and a lot of like the strategy and just how to play the game out. Yeah, so like Moscow 5, 
group invades and stuff like that was kind of yeah, like invading the jungle was just like oh, they can come into they can go past the river before four minutes they're yeah. cheating right? yeah yeah because like junglers would do that all the time but it was never like hey mid you have no minion wave do you want to come with me like no yeah, one did that or, shit or like the support would come and they like 1v2 the bot lane would give me blue Dar- buff Dar- 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 would just push and run into your jungle that's yeah. all he did he played shivana with riggle's lantern and would just yeah. push and run into your jungle. <laughs> like, that's all he did i remember like when we got hard out played because they gave Urgot blue buff at level one. And he oh yeah, 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 yeah. And, that and, was and, that was that was when I was like, oh my god, Moscow Five are so cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they did that to us, I was like, I, I can't do anything to respect this. Like yeah. when they killed Dominate at like the red buff, and Dom then, like, is so salty about yeah, the story. Yeah, that, that's way. like the play where like if you tell talk to Dom about it, he is like the saltiest person ever because in comps he, he specifically tells, he tells, tells Locus, yeah. please ward my red buff interest. They're gonna invade me, and like Locus does it, and then he gets invaded, dies, and then Alistair flashes over the, Wraith yeah, and and the combo you. kills me and I'm just like we lost that I was instantly, <laughs> yeah, it was, I instantly <laughs> thought we lost it was so funny dude. that was so good that yeah. play was like fuck that was, when I saw that shit I was like holy shit yeah, yeah. These guys are so good. Yeah, and then like so then SKT or like so that was what they were known for for North America. It was you know C9 doing all the swaps to top side and stuff like that. And SKT was the team that was like, we have vision control. We're gonna pick your ass over and over and over and, and over. And to be fair, they had Faker. Yeah, as well. Which Dude, is- Faker would go back and buy two pinks and like two greens and would just take over a bot side on his own and then just like pick the jungler or pick the support. And, and, like, there's still highlight clips of him killing Zyrus. I remember. Yeah, that. yeah, like, yeah. It's just <laughs> his LeBlanc Dude. and the enemy Zyra. By the time the enemy Zyra throws the E, she's already <laughs> he's dead. already dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh <God>. my god. <laughs> he would play the same thing with Ari just sitting there like charm dead. Yeah. All right, bye. <laughs> uh, season LeBlanc, two was like, like the press, the pressure period for. Oh it, no! It was that like, was the worst support meta by far. Yeah, it was the meta where like the game that always gets talked about is that one uh, Chinese support who had boots, sidestone at like. 20 no, there wasn't even the sidestone yeah. then. No, that was oh, the green ward. it was just you would stack greens and pinks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You had boots and then the wards at at like. Yeah. You know what's funny yeah. is uh, I was trying to Miles daydreaming and he was like, I actually like support back then. He was just saying that like it creates so much tension for support players and to be like super careful because you like had to keep your oracles up because every time you died you'd have to pay four hundred gold for another yeah, oracle. I mean, it's like punishing in the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, the wrong way. I mean, yeah, it just makes it so. Well, I think back then it made the role like no one wanted to play it. Yeah, and yeah. now like the role is like. Super. Whenever I play support, I'm having a great time. Like yeah. I'm just like, I love this role. And I think I couldn't say that about the support before because if if you got punished as a support before, you weren't playing the game. You were yeah, like yeah. five levels behind <laughs> with a boot. Every every support was like, I exist to drop this like one thing. Whereas like Annie is like a flash alt bot, and like Blitzcrank was a hook bot, and yeah. like Janna was an alt bot, and like everyone was just like, that's that's that one thing that you do. Zyra was like, drop your combo and die. Everything just <laughs> died. They did one thing and died. Yep. Yeah. I, I did not like playing support then. <laughs> just that was Malzahar funny. would not exist. It's like, no, you can't ult. You're, you're dead. Uh, I, I just thought it was really funny because at the time, that's when, that's when, like, when I planned to kill bot lane, I would just be like, support's probably got, like, 600 health. I'll just one-hit this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, if he ever face-checks a bush, like, the jungle, the, 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 even the AD, the top laner, and the mid laner could one-hit the support. I mean, junglers back then were kind of in a similar, similar struggle. They the the like, Maokai Oracle bot? Yeah, Dude, yeah. that oh, sucks so hard. Wait, when you, you, you got double, start... double, you got Moby Boots, double uh, gold per 10, and you got Oracles. Yeah. And that's like all you did. <laughs> yeah, all you just ran bought. around and you just cleared wards. He's <laughs> like, how many jungle camps did you kill? None. Froggen took all of them, but I got four wards. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> the Froggen uh, lane pattern where yeah. he pushes, goes to your own raids, Pushes walls, pushes their raids, pushes yeah. their walls, yeah, and, dude. <laughs> and he's at like 300 CS at like dude, 20 minutes. I used to crush on Mordekaiser mid because that's all you would do. Yeah. You would just get your your uh, your uh, gun. Uh, holy shit, was it revolver? Yeah, Hashtag yeah. revolver. Push up and then just go yeah, to the. Yeah, I actually think Odwin like got famous off that shit because Odwin legit would be the guy who played Maokai jungle and he'd sit it, like he like come to your lane, clear the word, leave, and come back and do it again with Oracle, and you just be like. You'd they, be pissed, I'd be dude. so mad. And that's why Moscow 5 was so good, because everyone's doing this, like, bitch-ass, like, <laughs> Oracle thing, and then the Shivana's in your face, and you're like, oh, stop! stop. 
Fuck. Yeah, more mid with 10 pot start. Holy. Oh my god. Oh, Didn't you get 13 pot? Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's something insane. It was 14 pot. It, it was something I think it's 13. I don't remember. Something like that. Yeah, god. That was so funny. That was so fucking lame. He just like, he's never out of pots. He and still then, has pots. And then by the time he comes back to lane, he's got his revolver. Yeah. <laughs> you had to kill him or he was there the whole lane phase. Uh, there was right. some really, like, really dumb stuff in League's history. Like the, the red pot stuff. Hey, red, I yeah. abused that. Red Yo, exhaust. Why would start red pot. I was like, what the I, fuck? Top yeah. lane was like such a fucking Dude, scary exhaust place. Exhaust and night red pot fizz. When Jensen first started doing that, when he was still incarnation, it was like, oh my god, this guy's a genius. <laughs> I did exhaust and night cat. Got rank three at season one. I did, did did exhaust ignite. Or no, sorry, I did red pot blue pot kale because you could have this thing where you start the the extra gold yeah. in the lane and there's a support mastery. I took both pots and level one killed Link in a scrim <laughs> and he had he saved that and sent me the YouTube of it like a year later. He's like, I remember when he used to do this shit to me. And I was just like, oh wow, I was really smart back then. <laughs> and because at the time, Kale had like a one to one ratio as his Q. Yeah. Literally, I Q, I Q them and they would die. It would just be it. Like, Well, I just remember in top lane when Rengar came out, you would stack up your uh, passive to four on the, the golems. And, oh, and then, yeah. And then you'd come into lane oh, with yeah. a red, buff, uh, red, uh, red pot and um, an ignite. And you just like come out and you triple Q them and they just instantly yeah. evaporated. Oh, that, was, that was like something you just learned. Like that happens once you're like, Wow, I just can't fall for that shit again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's so hard to not fall for because it it's like, oh, I just have to sack minions. You just all have minions. to sit yeah. there. And, and like, sometimes yeah. the minions would just randomly push against oh you. Oh my god, minion RNG back in the <laughs> yeah. day. Remember when you would just lose bot lanes level 1 because you had bad minion yeah, RNG? Yeah, you have the oh minion god, RNG just so like annoying. randomly had pushed your lane. Yeah, so like, you, both, you both have to start the jungle camps and then like one bot lane just <laughs> yeah, super hard target to creep so you miss a CS and then it's just over. You can't contest level 2. That was the funniest. And by funniest, I mean the dumbest thing and it Took Wait, them like five seasons well, to fix it. I, I just remember like people ask me this question all the time. Like, don't you miss old Gragas? I'm just like, I don't know if you guys remember what? That old Gragas. I was <laughs> literally the yeah, most broken me. champion. I, sure, I was really good at it. Like, I'm not even gonna say I wasn't, but I, I was also playing like the best mid laner in the in the game. Yeah. Like, I would start red pot on Gragas. <laughs> And literally kill them going body slam level one. Yeah. And it was just like at any the point. Famous clip is you and boy. Oh god, that clip was that clip so good. So uh, yeah. good. Uh, that was at a time where people didn't know you could body slam flash, so it was just like, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. That old Grog is old Nidalee, where it's just like uh, one spear ninety percent. You got yeah. time to back. The, <laughs> the old Gragas E at level one did hundred twenty before you got anything. And it, it, it was... Old ratios were so broken. Yeah, yeah, it was just like, oh my god, you hit them with a, an E and they just die. Ooh, yeah. old AP sign, dude. Oh, oh yeah, yeah that, that was... That was that like Wait, wasn't even fun. There was just like so many champions <laughs> that they just... That yeah, I know. yeah, I know, you guys are kidding. Yeah, we were top five players with that shit. There were so many champions that just like had 1.0 AP ratios back then. Like the Everyone. AP Trindamir, the Master Yi shit. Oh, uh, like, that's you, yeah, that's you right dude. There. Uh, just you weren't like, even the original. It was like, it was uh, Alex Yi shit yeah, first, yeah, and then yeah. you copied and it. And then I was just like, that looks broken. Let me try it. And then no one else was playing at the time for some reason. Yeah, and I was yeah. just like, people were so stubborn back then yeah. to pick stuff up that other people played yeah. first. It was like a pride thing. It was like, no, it's not that good. It's yeah. not that good. Yeah, I, I, the best thing is when they say something, I can beat that. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And then like, they say that uh, uh, against like the Yi I was playing in scrims and like, I like 9 0 them the first game, and then they would just ban it every other game. <laughs> Holy like, shit. Yeah, the no time shit. that we played against you guys, and you played like Blitzcrank support with like Jax and like some other like ridiculous stuff, I was like, why are you guys doing this? You're just wasting your own time. We, we were. It was, it was like Crumbs was on the team. Q, yeah. It, I forget what it, it was. It was a strategy where we used. Uh, it was like triple teleport. Yeah. It yeah. was something. <laughs> teleport crazy. smite on like something. Was, I, I think I think for us, we didn't really well define. We didn't have very efficient practice. We just did whatever we wanted to do. So everyone was just like, what do you think about. Okay, get this. What do you think about Udyr solo laning? Oh, Udyr top was good though. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. It was, it was, was another red pot. It, it, it was yeah. something like Udyr solo. Tiger stance. The double tiger stance. It yeah. was like Udyr solo landing, but he would take a buff, and then like your other, like someone else would take another buff, and then you would like have him solo, and you have a roaming like support and like. You guys came up with the oh, dumbest yeah. shit. We had, we had the. And you never shit. did it in LCS. Yeah. Almost. Well, oh yeah, yeah. There's what I think. See, <laughs> I think it got so bad that one time. Uh, uh, 
we had to apologize to Monte Cristo for like doing something in scrims because yeah. like we like well hard, we hated it too we, yeah we hard tilted COG because we played them for a full week with one strategy and didn't bring it on the LCS because as we played it throughout the no it was terrible because we played against COG the other team that would do wonky we, stuff yeah well we and, did some weird stuff and, too. and so what ended up happening was it worked super well the first time we literally like beat every team the first time we did okay cool um and best of ones like we would win 100 percent. yeah then like as we scrimmed out the week of course they're gonna learn how to play but we want them to do that we want the worst case scenario right yeah but for clg it's different worst case scenarios for other teams like they pick the right champions right worst case scenario against clg is their jungle their top their mid their support all take teleport <laughs> and they do dumb shit and back. they do dumb shit back yeah. we're literally like level ones or they all they like five man flash over the dragon wall yeah, and then yeah i remember that and, everyone and, always talked about that level one and, from CLG. and i'm just like like we were doing super stuff and so were they so we like we made them do inefficient practice as well it was so fun <laughs> the five the, flashed them over dragon the funniest balls, example of like us pulling out a strike that is we had like nunu janna like i forget exactly what the comp was uh and like an 80 carry like jinx and our strat was just to group up we'd lane swap and group up level three and just mow your turret down oh, and then yeah. we would constantly just go as five man and just group and push and I group remember and push. it was with zeke and on the team yeah and it was it was like some stupid comp and then we had an olaf with teleport yeah. who would just go and clean up the other waves so the olaf collected all the farm while everyone else just grouped his five like yeah. four and pushed and we did that against clg yeah. and we almost won the game but then we fucked up one team fight because cock didn't know shivana was a knockup versus a yasuo so shivana alts him knocks him up Yasuo takes the ult and this like broken ass Yasuo. Yeah. They kill him and like CLG comes back in the game and it was that was when Chowster was uh playing. Like he was subbing in, remember? Oh, in yeah, season yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like the game where it was like, oh my god. I just, I just remember the best time was when CLG boot camped in Korea. And, and came back and got smashed and by came back <laughs> And they played you guys. And at the time, we were playing you guys, and we were just like you guys were the, the lamest team ever to play. <laughs> yeah, we were. We, were, we had the Triss mid yeah, with like the Nidalee yeah, top. Tristana, you had the Tristana mid with Nidalee top, and then you had Dom who played auto lock Nunu every single game. He, <laughs> yeah. he would lock in Nunu and he would all. Yeah, I remember the funniest one. Yeah, this is so good. He would all chat us in the game and be like, I'm taking Baron at 20 minutes. Please come and stop me. It was 15 and, because oh, Baron's yeah, 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 yeah. He, he would tell he you. He told us, and we still wouldn't be able to stop it half the time. We, like, I think my team tilted so hard because i was just like wow they're just too good for us i guess but he would actually like all chat us and like that was like the worst thing and so we knew going in like our success rate against this team was like 30 percent and we had been practicing against them so we're just like clg this is not shit you're gonna see in clg this is the in a team the, liquid meta, meta yeah. 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 yeah and so they come back and of course they get slammed it's and one of the games I think Dom got like that, like yeah. 17 minute Baron. I was just like, yeah, this is what happened. The funniest thing was too, like afterwards, like hearing like how CLG talked about, it, they're like, yeah, well, we just fought before like our item spikes. Like we were in the power trough of like the Rod of Ages being bought but not being stacked. <laughs> so our Maokai wasn't like, they're talking about all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? We just picked Nidalee and split push. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, they they, they yeah. had like all this like Korean meta shit that they were talking about. Yeah. And we're like, dude, nah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Welcome to North America. Yeah. Welcome to North America. Yeah. Welcome back. I'm sure you had a good two week vacation, but yeah. you're back on vacation. <laughs> Actually, because in playoffs, you could play in playoffs and relegations back then. CLG had to play in relegations because they played you guys. They played Dig after that. Oh yeah. Wait, did they? Yeah, because it was the play. It was at MSI or not MSI Pack. Excuse me. That was the one where we three owed them, and then we lost to C9, and, and TSM beat you guys, and then it was like a TSM. And then we beat them, so they got into relegation. Yeah, so they had to go into relegation. Oh, and yeah. First Academy was up 2-0, and then got reverse swept. Oh, yeah. That CLG was, was like yeah. this close to getting relegated. Yeah, that oh, was gosh. crazy. They ran the protected double if cop. Yeah, they just three ran times. that shit three, three times in a row. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I love, talking to George about this is so funny. George, by the way, is hot chef for, the, for those of you who don't know his real name. George he, G -G -G -G. he just like, I, I just told him to play the best comp in the game, ball comp. He has like a hard off for ball comp. Ball comp? If you, if you ask him about the best comps in the game, he's like, just play ball comp, dude. You just ball up and you just win. Like, it's just so easy. And I'm just like, like at the time, I was the type of guy who like, I hated ball comp, but it was like, it's the easiest to do. I just told them play ball comp and we just won relegations. <laughs> just start laughing. It's so funny. DFG Ari. Do you remember that? Where Ari didn't have to land a single ability. She just 
rush into you. Wait, DMT. she's had multiple God. times where you, yeah, that happened. I, right yeah. now that's the same thing. Honestly, by yeah. the way, but like li- Gunblade, Gunblade, Gunblade Lich Bane is like the same thing. Yeah. The current LeBlanc can hit you with Gunblade Q, Empowered Q, and miss the E and kill you. Right yeah, now. that's true. Too. That, I just think it's so funny that when the whole thing happened with Ari, where they're like, okay, so uh, we want to make her damage less consistent, so we're gonna put a lot of it on the E, right? Like you had to hit the charm to kill people, and it was like the patch afterwards, people are still just dying from her art W Qing in, and it was just like, like what the well, fuck? Old old DFG was just stupid you had like Karthus building it yeah because it was yeah. like supposed to be an assassin tool and it's like no it's just 45 percent of your max hp i just re- i just remember like dfg playing- morty because it's it scaled with your ap yeah. so remember you just- dfg no. morty kaiser yeah. you just do I'll- an instant like 60 yeah. percent i was doing HP. dfg tristana with full ap because oh. the ulti had a 1.5 so ratio yeah. Yeah, yeah. i literally would jump in dfg oh, oh, yeah dfg and he, he he would die from 100%. the old the old minion wave like old, tricks yeah with, yeah, yeah. yeah the with, fact that explosions would happen per thing that you yeah killed. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you it, max w you jump on the minion wave and if they were in it they just died oh, they just died yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. it was so it, much the old AP <laughs> tricks is so funny they got the best so bad people were just like stop playing this shit i'm like no. stop playing this shit. Yeah, we, then we played ad trisk and we would just everyone yeah. thought yeah, everyone thought it wasn't good yeah you just rush static shiv Get Bork and then yeah. like. Just I, I thought it one. would work better with with the new new that you guys played. Like, yeah, because then like, like at level God. 50, yeah, fifteen minutes in. God. So like three points Tristan a Q like level eleven or thirteen meets up with Nunu and they just two man Baron. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the hell. Uh, uh, I think we answered a total of two questions. Yeah. We just went into we, like well, because yeah, mode. chat chat was sucking, so we're like, eh, this is fun. Let's talk yeah. about league. It's fun. It was fun. You're making league sound so boring nowadays compared to back. Back, I think it's Not it's more fleshed out. You know, I think definitely. I actually enjoy league a lot right now. Uh, yeah. But um, it's just nostalgia, right? You're, you're seeing stuff through rose tinted goggles. I'm. Not, I, I talk to you about the good times, right? I don't talk to you about the times where QD is playing and he face checks the double buffs and tries to steal it against CLG and then yeah the that was like, like that those are the games where I'm just like oh, oh god <laughs> yeah and then it's like guys. like Zeb was broken as fuck and like he got one kill and now he's just split pushing for the next 40 minutes of the game and no one can ever 1v1 or, or 1v2 or like the top lane meta of like Mundo Shivana oh, Renekton we're literally yeah. if Shivana got like a lead you can never kill it she yeah. 1v5 every game and you were yeah. just like a, that was fucking mean. Yeah. Remember, uh, that was the time when AD did Shivana. That was fucking TMS Shivana was hilarious yeah. too. <laughs> because it scaled like quadrilaterally yeah, or something. Yeah. So you would like get a Tiamat and they would hit four times or something. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, and, the? and then there's also like metas where you're playing against, I don't know, pre nerf Elise, where, which would one hit you. Old, old Renekton Elise was like the biggest bullshit. Like you yeah. just couldn't live. Level three, you're dead top, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. no matter what. And <laughs> you try and push up, you're dead. You try and you let the wave come into you, you're dead. Like you're just dead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I just think in general, like back then, League uh, Riot was a lot uh, less careful about things, so you, you, things would slip through, right? And so like there was much more of a discovery period, I think, back then, where like people would be like, "Oh wait, Trindamir has his AP ratio. How can we abuse this?" Or like all this other stuff. Whereas nowadays, they're like now, way more careful. Now about it's just that like, shit. okay, can I build Gunblade or can I, can I build Bork on this character? <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, like, we're in the moment right now where we're like complaining about Gunblade LeBlanc, like. Yeah. A year from now, like we'll probably look back and be like, "Remember Gunblade LeBlanc? That thing just split push. It had sustain. Yeah, yeah. Blah blah blah." Yeah, I got it. But it's so. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I think I think there's a, there's problems every every season. Yeah. yeah, you remember the good stuff because the good stuff is the funny stuff, like the AP. It's yeah, the funny yeah, stuff. yeah. I, I actually I, I remember looking back and rewatching the game like a year ago, and I was like, "Wow, I was terrible back then." Like the whole all the teams Dude, were terrible. Everyone, yeah, everyone was like, so bad. The problem, the thing is, like the character I was playing, like legit, like. I would actually just one hit the entire enemy team in two seconds. Yeah, Gragas's R legitimately was the most busted piece of shit. Like, yeah, like <laughs> right, right now people are so much better at Gragas. Like, if I'm watching Gragas one tricks do yeah. like the most insane stuff. Before you didn't even know how to do any of that stuff because, and this is exact. I remember Cutie Pie telling me this. He's like, okay, don't look to like like hit them back or like displace anyone with your Gragas. So just throw it into the middle of champions. You just did your job. I'm like, okay. And so once I learned how to do that, I was like, oh, I'm a good Gragas player. <laughs> and now, now Gragas is yeah. literally like it's an insect. Yeah, yeah, now it's like it's like a play where you push the other player in. And like before, it was a play where if I hit you, you died. Yeah. So I had no need to use your, like, what do I do with your dead body? Yeah. <laughs> that was... And like Lee, I'm like just like Lee Sin, like so there was there was no insect until like season three, season four. Yeah. Where like, I remember oh, yeah. the first time people saw that, like that shit blew people. Oh minds. my god, it's possible! Like insect was like 
And then like oh you, you saw like the evolution where like only a couple people could do it. Could and, like, do it, yeah. yeah. And then like everyone does it now. And now like, it's like you have to be able to lead. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. If you if you can't kick Flash on Lee Sin, you like can't play the champ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, kick Flash wasn't the thing. Yeah. Even. Yeah. That was, when I first saw that, I was like, oh, people are sick. Yeah, yeah. people were so bad about discovering using Flash to like cancel animations. A lot of like animation canceling was like really. Yeah, bad. When, when people first learned how that Ari E Flash, that was like Ari's legit like. Kill potential went up by twenty percent. Yeah, yeah. Like, like shit, there, right? Who's like famous? Yeah. Flash shit. Uh, and there's just so many like small things that people don't know that they didn't know back then. Where now it's like almost all it's, it's fleshed out. You know, yeah, I, I think you'll see like new stuff with new new patches, new items. I think mid season is gonna help a lot with the new item changes. There's gonna be always that period, experimental period. But there's like good things and bad things with having the game more defined. Yeah. So uh, we done with uh, league, the nostalgia? league nostalgia trip. Yeah. Yeah. You want to call it? It wasn't even Q and A. It's like the league nostalgia trip. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I had, yeah. I had fun. That's cool. that's cool. Thank you guys for watching this episode of PLT. Yes. Um, if you missed any of our previous episodes or really rewatch this episode again because you just love us, you can find it on my YouTube, Twitch.tv slash or YouTube.com slash Scar Official. Uh, both episodes from last week are on there. I understand one of them came up a little bit late, but that's my bad. Uh, anyways. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Oh, yep, I'll be there. Where we'll be talking about FlyQuest versus TSM, as well as doing predictions for finals. Yeah, we'll have. You want to do both tomorrow? Because I will... we we sh we should do both. Yeah, I think. Yeah. But so we will do prediction for tomorrow. Probably both tomorrow. As soon as I, I'll talk, I'll clarify with. Yeah, Mark we need to finalize our plan. But thank you guys for watching. Bye guys. Bye, Bye boy. Bye.